Welcome back to the Captain Logan Show. Tis I, Captain Logan. And joining me as always is my wonderful chat moderator and producer, DJ Martinez. Hello, DJ. Hello, how's it going? How you doing, buddy? Tonight, we have a shocking, uncallable mystery guest. It's shocking and uncallable because it's a, a thing that you never thought that uh, even a year ago uh, I would talk about on camera. Now it's like almost a monthly basis. <laughs> we, we've got tattoo talk with Cap, and uh, also just somebody that I didn't announce and that uh, you guys have never met before, so you couldn't call him because you didn't even know about him. <laughs> but tonight we're gonna chat a little bit about uh, tattoo culture and uh, comics and things, uh, comic art, with uh, Elmo, who's been doing all of my tattoos, and yeah. he is a wonderfully talented artist, and I'm very excited to have him on the show. Thank you. Thanks for being here, man. Oh, no worries, no worries, my pleasure. Um. So we're going to do uh, that as our lead-in topic, and then, as usual, it's going to be an Ask Me Anything show. Uh, so after we talk a little bit about that, uh, I'm going to throw some questions at Elmo. We're going to talk about uh, <coughs> what he does and his career and stuff. Uh, it will be interesting, I'm sure. And then, uh, you guys, feel free to ask questions about anything you want to, uh, pop culture related and otherwise within reason, as always. <laughs> uh, comic stuff, sci-fi stuff, uh, whatever is going on in the news right now that I may or may not know about. Uh, but you can also ask uh, Elmo stuff, and you can uh, continue the conversation that we will start for the first uh, 15, 20 minutes or so. Or so, or show yeah. of the so, uh, DJ. DJ, how's your week been going, man? Oh, it's been great. I just got back in town. Uh, we've been out of town for a week for my wife's birthday. We were up in the mountains of Virginia and West Virginia. We rented a, a Sprinter van, and we were traveling around on the road it was a lot of fun that's awesome yeah i saw some of your pictures on facebook as i as i was it seems like you're always on a cool vacation <laughs> we try to go for once for her birthday and once for my birthday every year guys as always if you want to make sure that your question or a comment concern idea uh complaint is read on camera and discussed you can leave a super chat in any dollar amount that guarantees that we will talk about uh whatever you want us to talk about we uh, thank you as always to anybody who has done or ever will do that you guys are wonderful we sure appreciate it don't feel like you have to do that you can leave a regular question pre-written uh in the regular comments and uh mark it at dj dj martinez uh so so that our uh, moderator and producer sees it uh, at DJ, at The Welder, at a uh, guy who will never get tattoos. Uh, he answers to any of, and, and all of these things. The tattooless one. Hey, never say never. Never say never. How many am I going to have to get before you finally go, okay, fine. I, I, guess, I guess I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, what's the ratio? I think it's like 15 to 1. So Are you going to design it yourself? Oh, yeah, if I did, I definitely would. My wife has designed uh, all of hers, I think. Uh, so, Elmo, I know that you always say that a, a lot of folks, even if they're good artists, don't necessarily know what would make for a great tattoo. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's totally polar opposite, yeah. Or but, polar the, yeah. but the first one I got yeah. was the Geek Geekvolution logo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, DJ did that, oh, and nice, do nice. you think this makes for a good tattoo? Yeah, it's drawn really well. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, done, it's laid out really well. Yeah. Makes for a good tattoo. That wasn't, yeah, that wasn't the original intent, but uh, yeah, it works out multi, that way anyway, yeah. Multi-purpose uh, uh, design. <laughs> so, um, before we uh, get into some discussion with you, Elmo, uh -huh. uh, I want to show everybody the uh, new one that we're working uh -huh. on. Yeah, that's uh, right. I made sure that I went in last night for yet another tattoo, or, or a partial tattoo, just before the show, so you guys could see something new. So once again, DJ, it's Tattoo Talk with Cap, <laughs> and hey, well. uh, my now seventh tattoo mm -hmm. within nine months, I'm averaging every six weeks right now, <laughs> is uh, Sonic and Knuckles. I got my uh, Sonic and Knuckles tattoo getting started. This is what I thought would be one of my smallest, nah. is uh, my third largest tattoo right now, Second, uh, third only to Knights and uh, my giant bubbles that uh, <laughs> I've got on my leg here. Uh, it's so funny that that's your third largest. Thing. <laughs> I know. You told me you messaged me yesterday. You're like, it's huge. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just a logo, and I thought it would be a lot smaller. And then Elmo was like, well, we should go sideways with it. And I'm assuming that you thought we should probably go larger with it because of all the like smaller details. Oh, no, well, and no, and to fit the body part, so it's not so small on your side of your arm. You know, you hold your arm up and just get the small tattoo. It's kind of out of place. So. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, we'll I, would have, with it. I would have never thought to go that large, yeah. and I would ne have never thought to go <laughs> sideways with it, <laughs> yeah. and that's why you're the expert. Yeah, that's why you paid the big bucks anyway, huh? That's why I leave a lot of these things to you. <laughs> Uh, El Elmo, and I'm sure other uh, tattoo artists have this, Elmo will be like, uh, what do you want? I'm like, well, I mean, I'm not sure, because I know you'll make it look a thousand yeah. times better than I will when I start telling you things. Yeah, and you're like, just send me a picture when we go to, go to town from there. Yeah, it's awesome. So, yeah, uh, I've, I've got seven, uh, five of them Elmo has done. It won't be, this will not be the last. Uh, this one is going to get colored in in a couple weeks. Yep. Um, I think it looks really good in black and white. Like, there was a part of me that almost wanted yeah, to leave was, it. Nah, uh, I think it's really, really pretty. Color. And it, it, immediately, I'm almost like, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> we're finishing it, yeah. It's like, we're, we're finishing it. I'm like, well, I mean, it's my own. Like, yeah, but we're, yeah. we're, we're finishing it, so, you know, deal with it. Uh, and that's... Uh, that, that's what artists and professionals do. So anyway, let's take a look at a few of Elmo's uh, really wonderful pieces uh, so that you guys can see other really neat things that he's done. Uh, Elmo, the way I've got my monitors here, I don't know if you're going to be able to see yeah, what I'm showing. See which ones you're showing. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I could probably describe them and you wouldn't know what they were. <laughs> so I... Uh, you told me at one point that uh, one of these, is it this one, that one of the Mario tattoos you did uh, kind of went viral? It was the other one, the, the, the big thigh piece that's further on, yeah. The, two, that one, that, that was the whole thigh piece, yeah. We did all, that all in one day, like eight and a half hours of the tattoo convention. And yeah, wow. it, it went pretty, pretty bonkers, everybody liked it a lot. See, now I really want to go to a tattoo convention. Oh, man, they're fun. Yeah. That sounds <laughs> neat, yeah. How often do you do those? Uh, I, how, I used to go at least uh, once every four weeks, every three weeks. I did, yeah, all over oh, the country, yeah. That, wow, that often? Oh, yeah. This happened again. Okay, uh, everybody bear with me because I'm going to need to get these cameras back in. Yeah, DJ, are you still with us? I am. I can hear you. I don't, I don't know what's going on with my machine tonight, guys. My apologies. Anyway, uh, it might just be audio, but but with DJ. Okay. This <laughs> it's oh, going to be one a, of those what shows. A, what a weird... Yeah, that's, that, that that's, 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 that's a show that will never get off the ground. Just the <laughs> moderator and audio. <laughs> Uh, you, you know, there's there's weirder things that we've tried that have somehow worked, so... <laughs> See, your questions get asked, but not get answered. <laughs> okay, so the aspect ratios are going to be weird, but uh, they'll, they'll be in here. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. Anyway, my, my apologies, guys. Um, well, while, while I continue to do this, uh, Elmo, since you're actually on camera, huh? why... <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, how you got started and how long you've been doing this? Yeah. Uh, 20 years, yeah? Yeah, 23 years now. Yep. I uh, started in Texas. Yeah, I was raised around it. My uncle and my cousin were both tattoo artists. So ever since I was a little kid, I've been able to, well, funny enough, I used to copy like uh, uh, artwork out of uh, comic books and stuff. That's what got me into like that, that genre of drawing. What was your like go-to? Uh, back in the day, it was uh, uh, Ghostbusters and Spider-Man. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I remember like my grandma having a bunch of drawings I did when I was a little kid, both of those. But uh, yeah, and I started uh, my apprenticeship when I was 18 in Texas and haven't looked back since, so. Yeah, um, yeah I still can't get my <laughs> my camera in there. <laughs> it's gonna be the Elmo and DJ show this oh, evening, folks. Can't <laughs> That's funny. That's fine, we'll just roll. Come on, your name's in the title. Like, you gotta be like, no. <laughs> no, I'm still frozen. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not going great, guys. It's really, it's really not. This is unfortunate. Um, so, uh, what would you say, Elmo, are the, the big kind of influences for you art-wise besides, uh, just Ghostbusters and Spider-Man, like you started, like, could you name particular artists? Oh, uh, yeah, like, uh, uh, it's huge, we were talking about it earlier, is, uh, McFarlane. McFarlane's a huge McFarlane fan, uh, uh, I've always been to the artwork of, like, uh, uh, comic book artwork, but never really, like, artist-specific, so I never got, like, to delve, delve into it too much more than Tom McFarlane when I was a little kid. But Did you collect it all? Uh, yes, I used to collect comics back in the day. Yeah. But never got really too heavy into it. But. Um, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and look at some more of this art, since none of us need to be on camera for this anyway. <laughs> uh, so, Elmo sent me some really cool pieces that I had not seen. Uh, here's a link. So, tons of 
Nintendo stuff and just oh, video yeah. game stuff in yeah. general, right? Yeah, so, yeah, that's pretty much my niche is like, you know, that whole uh, demographic of like the nerd tattoos or the, you know, the nerdy artwork, stuff like that. What would you say, kind of ballpark percentage wise, is uh, the, the like intellectual IP stuff you do versus original art? Uh, pr- I would pretty much, I would do, I would say probably 85%, 80% of stuff like I do that's intellectual, like, you know, art is, you know, based off of st- uh, somebody else's stuff. Yeah, pretty existing property. Yeah, yeah, I would say 20, 30%, like original custom drawing stuff, yeah. Uh, and then you, you'll you do quite a bit of just somebody brings in a picture and wants it, oh, like, yeah. exactly Oh, yeah, it depends on if, it, right? if it, it's not just anything like, a, you know, my style is my style, like, you know, bright, bold, cartoony, you know, somebody brings in, like, a realistic line, I'm like, eh, it's not my thing. Yeah, sure, so. sure. But something like I, I can't I can't show it because I'm not on camera. Yeah. Uh, but something like the tick that I got. Oh yeah. Um, you you went like line specific exactly that yeah, drawing. That's, yeah, that's the, like it's a Ben Edlin like, sketch. Well, it's the same thing as I do like a little kid's drawing. I want to go line for line specifically and make sure it's like dead on her. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was looking at that the other day, and there were just some lines that I had noticed before. It was like really specific, tiny nuances. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, like, yeah, like, this one and the other Mario that you just showed, like, I yeah. drew my versions of them. Like, that's, like, not, like, pulled up, you know, that's, you know, my original artwork based off of the, the characters, but yeah. Uh, do you ever go, like, straight up freeform? Or like, is it always you do a drawing? And oh, I always have a drawing or stuff, so, like, yeah. If, yeah. if anything else, like, if it's real big giant stuff, I'll take markers and draw on the skin itself, like, you know. So that is uh, a Batman Incorporated Batman. Uh, that's one of my absolute favorite outfits. Uh, and I'm not sure what that's originally based on. Is that a drawing that you uh, that you actually came up with, or is no, that, that directly from a comic? Yeah, he, it's directly from a comic. Yeah, I can't tell you which one, but I know he found the, the artwork and the image. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure who that is. Uh, it, and I'm sure somebody will tell us. Yeah. Um, it might be Finch, but I'm. It might be David Finch, but I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, and then this is a really cool. Um, that dude is a huge wow, fan. Awesome. He just went a whole Is this a sleeve or a leg? Like, it looks yeah, like a yeah, from his leg. Knee down. Okay. Knee down his ankle all the way around. Yeah. And actually, Luke Ferrigno shared that picture on his Instagram. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought it was super cool. Yeah, you had to shoot all sides of it. Yeah, to, that's what it is. Three different angles of the same leg. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Uh, I love what you did with integrating the logo. Oh, thank you. The, the different, the, yeah. Yeah, that's really neat. Uh, and oh, then it's... that carnage. Ooh. That's a potential for you, Cap. <laughs> we, we might want to start using that as the lead-in music. <laughs> for Tattoo Absolutely. Talk? Absolutely. Or, yeah, that, that's going to be the new Tattoo Talk theme. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, or, the Carnage, yeah, that, that one was definitely based off of uh, uh, somebody's painting. Like, that's just somebody did an oil painting based off of Carnage. Oh, really? Yeah, and then based off of that. It looks a lot like a Clayton Crane cover. And I'm not sure if uh, the whoever painted that was was looking at that piece or not, but uh, I, I, I think that's actually influenced specifically. Yeah, I want to say it's a little painting by an artist named Julie Bell. If oh, I okay. Right, yeah. But yeah, the side profile and everything. Um, yeah, she did a famous series. It was him and uh, Carnage, Carnage Venom, like you know, the yeah. two one of each. Yeah. And then there's a Superman with heat vision. <laughs> Uh, so was was that one that you had to come up with? I uh, know that's one he, he specifically wanted. Yeah, we found a really cool image. It was a full DC sleeve on that guy. So. Oh, neat. Yeah. Okay. So it's not just that Superman. No, 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 no. He's got but the, the Superman is really, huge. Yeah, it's his whole front of his forearm. Yeah. Yeah, you realize when you're doing a full sleeve, you're looking at 60, 70 hours worth of work. So yeah. Good lord. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's that's all the uh, stuff that you brought. And I just wanted to show folks oh. some of your um, beautiful artwork. I, I was wondering if you ever Elmo do like prints and things. Do, oh, do you yeah, ever yeah, do you ever sell of things of outside of just <laughs> tattoo oh, yeah. art? Yeah, I do. Uh, I get really famous for doing minions. So I started doing a lot of minion stickers. I did like a Yoda minion, Patrick Mahomes minion. I do these stickers. Like they sell out of conventions and stuff like that. What would you say is, and I'm sure you get this question all the time, but what would you say is the most elaborate sleeve you've ever done? Oh, good lord. It's this underwater leg sleeve this guy wanted. He let me do whatever I wanted to. We ended up spending, I want to say, 90 to 100 hours on his leg. Like, it's like every inch of his leg completely taken wow. care of. Yeah. It's like a battle royale, all these animals fighting each other. I'm going to try to fix this camera while we're talking, folks. <laughs> um, 
the other thing I wanted to ask you real quick is if you could talk, before we start taking some questions from the audience, is if you wouldn't mind talking a little bit about, because uh, this is a conversation you and I had at the, the shop that I thought was really interesting, because while you're sitting there getting tattooed for hours on end, uh, you have lots of interesting conversations. And I was, and sometimes you'll tattoo in very tender places, and the only way that uh, you can comfortably get through it is if you're having an interesting conversation. Oh, yeah. But um, not that I've had to deal with a lot of stuff that was like super painful, uh -huh. but there was that one place in the ninth tattoo that was just the worst yeah. uh, on, on, on my arm uh, up, up toward the top. But anyway, um, talk a little bit about uh, how the, just the process has changed in 20 years. Because you've, cause you've oh, talked to me a lot about things that you can do now that you couldn't. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah especially like like back in the early 2000s. The, 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 the equipment has definitely changed. Like the machines that we use, like the, the cartridge needle systems, where we can have like multiple different cartridges out, like with just one machine, and be able to switch them out with like two seconds, versus having like 30 machines set up for you know per tattoo. That always helps. Uh, the needles and the equipment has gotten way way better, so it hurts a little bit less. But it's still gonna be some pain about that. <laughs> of course, yeah. Is there? Um, and and I know that from experience now. <laughs> I. <laughs> Is is there? A, this might be a silly question, but um, are there like colors and things that you have now that you didn't used to be able to use? Like no, not really. I mean, I, I'd, I'd say the the, uh, the the quality of the colors and the pigments has grown way up. Like the the the, uh, the chemists, like the, the people now that are making it are actually like degree chemists. Like you know, that's what they do. It's a billion dollar industry. Wow. So they put a lot of money in research and development, and the big companies do anyway. But I would say like, there, there, there wasn't a there's not a color out now that wasn't available then. Just maybe it, it, it'll stay better, it'll look more vibrant in the skin than it would you know ten years ago or so. Sure. Yeah. Um, hey, hey, Cap. Sorry, yeah. real quick. Um, I think both mics might be picking up Elmo. We're getting some complaints about him his audio being echoey. Oh, that's good. That, well, that's that's <laughs> that's wonderful. Um, I will go ahead and just turn his off then and hope that my main mic picks him up okay. He sounds great to me, so I think that should be. That should be plenty. Awesome. Oh, you know what? It looks like my camera is being picked up on Skype, which is why I can't get it on uh, OBS right now, DJ. That makes sense. Well, I've got some questions from the chat for Elmo. Well, let's you yeah. To do that while you're. Listening. I apologize for being distracted. I'm just trying to figure <laughs> no this worries. thing out. Yeah. Um. It always happens when there's a guest. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> um, Elmo, if you want to see how a normal show goes, just watch the show. That's a great question. Um, sp uh, it's the only fan. way you'll ever see that is if you just watch the I, show. Yeah. <laughs> we don't require guests to do any kind of homework. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Spider Fan wants to know what is the most obscure property that Elmo has done for someone? Ooh, like uh, uh, like comic book related property? Uh, man. Yeah, or just anything licensed. Probably, I mean, most obscure, that's, I don't know. Uh, definitely the Powerpuff Girl, that was one of them. I haven't ever done a bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> But you seemed excited about it because you'd never gotten to do it before. Oh, yeah. And, and you said you'd never excited. done a tick before either. No, no. I wanted to do a color version, but I, I get the, what, the sketch, which, crap. <laughs> yeah, but the sketch wouldn't have looked great in color. Oh, no, it looks really cool. But, uh, yeah, most obscure, uh, man, I'm trying to think of, like, really obscure characters I've done. Yeah, I've done every Mario, every video game you can think of. I've done, yeah, Metroid. I've done all the Metroid characters. You're doing a Dark Souls sleeve. Yep, I'm doing a Dark Souls sleeve and a uh, Bloodborne sleeve on the same guy. Like, one... That's nuts. Yeah. Wow. And and you said that he's coming in every, every thir week for every yep. what a year or much, longer? Yeah. It probably take about a year to get it all done. Yeah. That's crazy. Jeez. I had this silly split second where I was like, I wonder if it's like being in the FBI where you can't talk about what you're working on. Oh right? no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't think he gives a shit. No. No. Yeah, he comes in every Thursday uh, at noon. So yeah, that's what I work on. <laughs> but he's, he's going quick. He's going to have both sleeves done. Like, he's only been working on like three months, and we've already got both the lower halves done. Like, uh, so related to that, uh, what property would you say you were most sick of doing? Uh, like somebody comes in and wants this thing, and you're like, okay. Minions. I've done so many minions. I, I, there for a while, I just quit doing them. Like, I, I would be sick it. of that just because I hate the minions, uh, <laughs> I think. But, but, but anyway. But you've done too many of them. Oh, yeah, I've done way too many. Yeah. So I'm gonna put a stop to that after a while. <laughs> he just has a sign: no more minions at the front. Yeah, exactly. On my website, yeah. Just... <laughs> Do you draw them like wearing lots of different oh, kinds yeah. of costumes? Yeah. And... Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, like it's like pop figures for you. You like you're, oh, you you yeah, translate them. Yeah. 
Well, to okay, yeah, so I did this one tattoo and it went bananas, no pun intended. Uh, it was, <laughs> I want to say it got published in 10 different continents oh, in like six weeks. Like, what? Yeah, in tattoo magazines and stuff. And it just went like viral all over the fucking, yeah. I was getting uh, 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 friends of mine from England were sending me magazines that it was in there. I'm like, crap. Yeah. So everybody started wanting me to do the minions. I'm like, crap. <laughs> That's what I got known for. And Elmo uh, has has uh, met and known lots of famous people. Yeah, lots of famous tattoo artists, I guess, yeah. <laughs> Uh, who would you say is the most famous person that you've tattooed? That I've tattooed per se myself? Yeah. Uh, uh, probably like lead singer of bands and stuff like that. Like, you know, uh, probably no, no yeah, because you told me you, you, you know lot, you've known lots of bands. Yeah, uh, like bands called The Pairs, No Effects. Uh, I've tattooed some of the guys. Uh, the guitar player for Flog Molly, I've tattooed him. So, yeah. yeah, that's really cool. But nobody, as far as like, uh, I was gonna say, like nobody would be. Would be so I, famous. I still, I still can't make this work. What? I don't, I don't know what the deal is. I just might not be on camera the rest of the show. <laughs> really, yours is. Yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't make it work. DJ, um, don't you just pull this camera around and use it? You could just run over and sit on Elmo's lap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, DJ, give me just a minute. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna close the call. All right. and call you back so everybody just give us a couple minutes I'm gonna we're gonna take a little bit of a break and see if we can get the technical issue uh, resolved and we'll be right back Hey, answer. Hello? Can't hear him? I can. Hello, sir. Okay, we have returned. Uh, Elmo's going to flip over here, and we're going to use one camera like we usually do. And hopefully next time I have a guest, I can make this work okay. But uh, <laughs> uh, the camera was working fine. It's just something to do with uh, my USB hub or something. I'm not I'm not sure what the deal is. But you use a PC? You know what? That's actually totally fair. <laughs> That's completely fair. Anyway, uh, DJ, what else do you see in the comments there? Let's go ahead and get to some questions here. And again, folks, like always, anything you want to chat about. Sure, sure. Um, Blue Dragon 5 wants to know if Elmo has ever misspelled or botched a tattoo. Oh, yeah. No, no, Good but question. I've seen several people do it. And, oh, yes, I have. I misspelled one, one word, the word beautiful on the guy. Uh, he was getting it for his daughter. He said, my beautiful princess or whatever. Oh, yeah. no. uh, the only reason his daughter knew is like right that was right after uh, was it Bruce Almighty come out when they were spelling the beautiful and his daughter's the only one that noticed it was misspelled like all his friends and everybody said <laughs> he loved it he did he wasn't mad about it I'm like oh thank God but, yeah. and then she and then she walked out going that's the way the cookie crumbled yeah <laughs> but thank goodness he wasn't too mad about it I was so petrified though but I've seen several people mess up real bad yeah there's really not a lot you can do about not it not really not, you know just pray cover it up no. <laughs> Now, have you done a lot of cover ops? Oh yeah, yeah, I've done yeah way too many to count. Yeah, there's not very much fun. They're very limiting artistic wise. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, my wife keeps joking. She's still not sure how how she feels about this whole thing. I think like she's been <laughs> real not, cool and yeah. supportive about it, but she's like, I don't know. It's kind of weird. I don't know. Like it's your body, whatever. Yeah. Um, but she keeps joking that the uh, Batman tattoo that we did, the uh -huh. Nightfall, uh, could easily be turned into a Deep Space Nine. So she's constantly <laughs> like, you know, in 10 years, you should just turn that into a Deep Space Nine. That's funny. 
you are blowing people's mind that he was in the house the whole time in the chat. Oh, that's really funny. Yeah, I just wanted to set it up so that we didn't have to be crowded in this in, in this one area. Oh, I was trying to be all rooms, yeah. I was trying to be all cool and fancy. Yeah, yeah, they all thought you were remote somewhere oh, else. Right. Like, like <laughs> DJ. Real quick. Yeah. And then there's probably also folks that are like, well, now that we know that, why'd you have to waste our time with that? You could have flipped around ten minutes ago. But I thought <laughs> I could fix it. And anyway, <laughs> my bunny just died. John Kelling says the Skype call is coming from inside the house. <laughs> Uh, Elmo, how many hours of ink do you have on your own person? Oh, God. Uh, well over 200. Easy, yeah. You can't even count the tattoos no, individually. No, 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 no. I've got like, my whole back and butt's all one giant image. And I've had it worked on like six times, but it's only one tattoo per se. No. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do you ever, years later, go back in and, uh, and try to like update things? Or... No, not really. Like, I, I'm pretty much like... I'm just a collector as far as I just like being covered. I'm not yeah. really particular about it. I mean, I've got a hot dog test in my elbow. Like, I really don't care. So, yeah, I mean, how it is and how it heals, yeah, I don't really care. Um, yeah, I, like, like I would assume that there are probably folks that will, after a few years, I uh, go back in and just try to make it brighter again. Oh, or... yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like the big, large sessions as I'm doing them, like, I'll go back there and kind of freshen it up as I'm going. Yeah, and kind of touch it up, yeah. Um, someone wants to know, yeah. Cap, Daniel Davis, Cap, have you ever regretted getting a tattoo? Well, I've only had them for a few months, uh, <laughs> and I don't, I don't suspect that I will, but like, not yet, no. Have you ever regretted no. getting a tattoo? No, no. no. I, I'm covered with a bunch of dumb ones, too, but yeah, no, like I said again, I, I, I get them just for fun, so yeah. You, you have, sometimes I wish I, I had your attitude about things. <laughs> remember, just remember, this remember this the, is kind of, I don't, I don't care, go with the flow. Remember the show Wilfred? No. Uh, Elijah Wood, where he saw the dude dressed as a dog? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got a yeah, picture yeah. of the dude dressed as a dog, like, on the side of my leg. <laughs> yeah. Of course you do. Oh. Senior Sticks, is yeah. DJ also in the house? <laughs> no. Yes, that's no, the big not. twist. Episode 300, we're finally going to reveal it. We're finally going to show you that that was just, like, a, a back door that I had. Like, a, like a secret door. Yeah, well, where... it's a green screen, uh, as Senior Sticks says. See, I just, I, I like the idea that that was a set, the whole time and yeah. I've moved since you started using that backdrop which would mean that I had to take the whole set with me when I moved yeah or it's just like a poster that you just roll up <laughs> <laughs> okay but then how, how do we account for all the times that you've gone to the back and pulled blu-rays down uh, it's just movie magic man <laughs> so DJ is an obsessive movie collector yeah. and do you notice how all of his movies are color coordinated I was just saying, yeah, they're very... <laughs> you ever seen anyone else organize wow. their movies no. that way no I'm not that's funny <laughs> I don't know how you find anything mm -hmm. just gotta remember <laughs> what, what, what shade of blue is do you, have a, do you have a database yeah yeah I have everything logged too I've done that recently ever since uh, I don't have as good of a memory as I used to because I'm getting old, getting up there in years. But DJ, um, you're like seven or eight years younger than me. <laughs> well, that doesn't change the fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that makes me feel even older. Oh, we got a very specific yeah. one from Spider Fan. Elmo, have you ever done a Harley Quinn tattoo for someone? Oh, a bunch. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's definitely been done. Any, I, I don't think there's not really many characters that you can think of that I haven't done yeah, over the years. And he wants, also wants to know, what are the most common female characters that people ask for? Uh, Harley Quinn's actually, like, number one, Poison Ivy. Any of Even that? still? Yeah, yeah. Wow, Harley Quinn's still. kind of shocking to me. Uh, as far as female characters, yeah. Um, Daniel Davis, Kappa Tattoo Trooper. Yeah, it's a thing that I never really thought I would get super into. I'd always considered maybe getting one. For the longest time, and then I just got the I just got the itch for it. Yeah. I just got a bug for it. I, I don't I don't know why. It seems almost like um, counterintuitive for me, and yet I uh, it's I, I've uh, I don't know I like like really kind of grown into the whole thing. Um, yeah, I've been here through the whole process. <laughs> me too. Another From thing, one to seven. <laughs> another thing I wanted to ask you, oh. Elmo, is I uh, how. How true do you think it is that uh, tattoos in general are a great deal more accepted than, oh, and, and very much so, yeah, than, yeah. than they were when you started? Oh, when I first started tattooing, it was only basically for sailors and convicts and stuff like that. Like, I had a hard time getting, <laughs> uh, getting apartments back in the day when I was younger. Uh, but ever since, like, the TV shows and, like, Ink Master and all those shows, 
has gotten a lot more popular. So now it's like more we're more rock star famous than we are, you know, like you know, con, you know, convicts or whatever. It yeah. can't be a coincidence that that happens simultaneous with geek culture going as mainstream as it. As oh it no, has, no, right? no! I think it's definitely they're, they're definitely colluded or you know, they definitely go hand in hand. I mean, I feel like some of the things that I'm getting now, I would have been concerned like 15 years ago about just you know, getting beaten up over. Oh, yeah, yeah you can't go into that shop like, I want a Powerpuff Girl, yeah. Back in the day, you would have got beat up for that. <laughs> I have hilariously had the thought a couple times, I have to be even more careful now to never go to prison. Oh, yeah. No, I yeah. have had that thought. Oh, what? You get a, a bubbles on your leg now. It's not that bad. <laughs> you don't have a big naked girl on your back. That'd be, you don't want to go to prison without one. But. That's, a, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. But I figured there'd still be people that would kind of, you know, have a point laugh attitude or be like, "Oh yeah, they're definitely gonna make fun of you." What a girly sure. man, yeah. or whatever. No, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, like I said, yeah, fifteen, twenty years ago, yeah, you definitely wouldn't walk into shop and get it. <laughs> One of those. I don't think this has just changed so much. Oh yeah, um, well, nowadays, like it's like back when I went to high school, like you get beat up for you know, like a nerd, you know what I'm saying? Like being into comics and that kind of art. Now it's like it's been more, way more celebrated. And uh, yeah, and and for better or worse, yeah. there's there's <laughs> pros and cons to everything. Yeah, uh, we we complain on the channel a lot about uh, the the kind of negative side to that, and uh, how watered down sometimes um, movies and TV shows will get because they're not for those of us that were really into the stuff. Oh, uh, it's the same thing in tattooing. Like you know, the fame of tattooing got so big. Yeah, you know, everybody sure. just flooded. The, oh, I can be a tattoo artist. Don't look that hard. So, but yeah. But you probably get more work than you than you would have. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but like, I'm talking and about and doing like, the kind of stuff that you like doing. Yeah, too. Saying, yeah. Oh, I'm talking about like there being like 90 more, million more tattoo artists than there used to be. You know? Yeah, like, you know, sure. Everybody getting into it. Yeah. But, but mean, some of that's supply and demand. Exactly. My clientele is still going to come to see me. So yeah, I mean, I'm not really worried about it. No. How many people would you say come to you that you would call regulars? Oh. Uh, besides the weekends, I'd keep open for walk-ins. I pretty much only do uh, by appointment only during the week. So, yeah, I would say like I would say like 60, 70 percent of the tattoos I do are just strictly appointment. Like I just got a message today about the ladies wanting to get a, a Disney leg sleeve. Uh, so, yeah. Um, DJ, what else have you seen in the comments, man? Um, the let's see. Daniel Davis wants to know if he if you've had any fun or interesting experiences when it comes to making a tattoo. Uh, that's kind of a broad question. Yeah, that's pretty uh, big. <laughs> uh, I did have this guy. I even <laughs> added interesting. It was just fun. Yeah, trying to I make did, it like, a little more specific. Okay, he so, might as well have said, "Hey Elmo, do you like your job?" Yeah, dude. <laughs> no. Uh, so this guy had a really fat cat. Are you what? ready to hang it up? <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna go manage a motel? Uh, some days I wish. No. Uh, I had this guy come in and he wanted to get a character his cat because I do like basically like new school or cartoony work. So his, cat, his cat's really fat, so he wanted his cat in a rascal, wearing a moo moo, uh, wearing Crocs. Yeah, it was so, it was really funny. Yeah. I thought that was going in a very different direction. <laughs> no, no, gonna, no, 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 yeah, I yeah, thought he yeah, was no. getting his cat tattooed. I was like, good mm -hmm. grief, is that? No, even... no, he's got a he got a character of his cat. I feel like that's where you draw the line, right? But, you know, like <laughs> tattooing animals. someone's pet? No, I'm not doing that, no. W would you tattoo a taxidermed animal? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can't complain. No, uh -oh, but... You wouldn't do that. No, I'm You really not, wouldn't but, do that. Uh, I wouldn't see a point in it, but yeah, no. So, you don't have to be specific, of course, but are there particular images and things that you personally just would refuse to tattoo on a person. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anything racist, negative, anything, yeah, anything like that, yeah. Anything demeaning, anything, yeah. Have you seen uh, Cap Swastika? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he surprised you know, how many he, times over the years I've been asked to do that. He didn't do that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, you'd be surprised. Like, uh, it's why I don't get drunk as much now. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking that day. I don't know. I don't know what that says about me. I think I was being demonically possessed. Uh, yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah, Just, yeah plead that one. Uh, Blue Dragon Five wants to know what are your oh some of your favorites that you've done uh, fictional characters. Uh, I mean the Carnage one, the one that he showed is probably one of my That's top three favorite really characters pretty. I've ever done. Yep. Uh, it's awesome. The big Mario thigh piece is in my top three, uh, and I did a big giant vulture chest piece on a, a ex girlfriend of mine that I really really loved to this day. It's an awesome tattoo. Wow. Yeah. That one took, I think we took 25 hours on that just on her chest. <laughs> wow. Not all at once, but yeah. You, you were you were telling me earlier. So when you say vulture, you don't mean like the Spider-Man villain. No, 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 no. I mean like the actual, like a bird vulture. Yeah. With a... I'm 
like a bird. Yeah. No, she wanted. She loved Michael Keaton. She yeah, really yeah, yeah. She didn't want the vulture from the Batman. <laughs> he was like, "Are you sure you want the mask and everything? Do you, <laughs> do you want the the heavy coat, like collar thing? Yeah. Okay." Um. You were telling me in the car uh, on the way over uh-huh. that I uh, some of like the longest jobs at one time you've done, oh, yeah. and I was just shocked to yeah. hear the the number of hours <laughs> that you've sometimes gone on a single person. Yeah, I had a lady ask me to do a full day session as much as she could take. She wanted to get her whole under stomach and her thigh done, and she sat there for thirteen and a half hours all in one session. Uh, yeah, we started at noon. It was like one thirty in the morning. It's like, please just get up. We're done. <laughs> yeah, I am so done. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Uh, Blue Dragon 5 actually meant, what are your favorite tattoos on fictional characters, like in a film? That's TV a great comics. question. Oh. That's really cool. Let's put you on the spot. I know, I'm right? sure that's yeah. a hard question, yeah, that's but that's I a mean. neat that's question. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything to think of off the top of my head. Off the cuff. Can I spin it in a different way? How far did your eyes roll in the back of your head when you saw the uh, Suicide Squad oh, in, in 2016? God. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so <laughs> happy that people didn't come in wanting to get that tattooed on their face and stuff like that. Yeah. But that was so cheesily done. That was horribly yeah, done. Yeah. And half those characters. Oh, yeah. Well, and they, like, a like lot you, of time, movie tattoos, like, you can tell they're, they're, they're fake. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But some of them, they do a really good job. Well, and that seems so pointless that you'd have all these all these actors that would have to sit in a chair for, like, 12 hours a day to get that many tattoos put on them every yeah. day. Well, did you uh, see the... Uh, Maybe it wasn't that oh. long. Maybe they're all just decals. So, like, I'm not sure how they did that, of course, but... Oh, who is the, uh, oh, like, Shia LaBeouf. Did you see his tattoo? No. He just gets his whole get? front torso tattooed for a movie role. That's amazing. Whoa. Yeah, like, his whole, it's all a like gangster front chest piece he got for a movie role. I'm like, are you serious? Yeah. I mean, say what you want to about Shia LaBeouf, character. but that's yeah, commitment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but, uh, Although, if you're Shia LaBeouf, you might, you might be thinking, this could be my last film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's hope that's, it that's, that's method, not hobbling to the restroom there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're not hurting anybody. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's not that Morbius thing. Could even think of it. It might not be the smartest thing for, for your... Uh, yeah, Jared Leto, um, speaking <laughs> of Suicide Squad, it, it might not be the smartest thing for your career, but at least you're not putting anybody else out. And actually, you're giving somebody money, so you're helping the economy. <laughs> At the same time. That's about the most positive thing we say about Jared Leto. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. We're talking about Shia LaBeouf right oh, now. Okay, okay. Um, no, have, have you heard that? St- we talked about this on the show, but have you heard that story with Leto making Morbius? That he uh, would... So so his character, before he gets vampified, and keep in mind that he's only in the condition uh, where he would do this for the first, like, 20 minutes of the movie, but he's supposed to be, um, like, like, uh, like kind of crippled, and he made people wheel him to the bathroom and stuff to stay in character. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a super method actor, that's pre- yeah. That's preposterous. Uh, when well, he was doing the same thing as Suicide Squad, he was sending everybody, like, gifts, like, gag gifts, like, yeah. gag and stuff like that, yeah. Which, admittedly, is worse. <laughs> but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's super, super method acting. Um, Spider fan, most uncomfortable tattoos you've done, whether they be really weird in and of themselves or uh, put in a weird place on someone's body. Although, if you can think of... Like actual fictional tattoos that are cool. Yeah, I, I think if, if, about it. Yeah. yeah, go back to that at some point because that that's a neat question. Uh, most uncomfortable tattoo as far as like the place that they got it at. I mean, there's not really anywhere in the human body that I haven't tattooed. We'll just put it that way. So, yeah, anywhere you think of that's painful, that uh, it's been tattooed. Uh, and you've told me that different people have the most painful spot, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's completely different, yeah. I mean, everybody's going to have the same kind of range, you know, like where it's going to be more painful in certain areas. Like the weird little areas, like, you know, behind your kneecap and in your, you know, in your ditch right here suck really bad. Uh, the worst pain I ever felt in my life was I got my full back and butt done. And, like, it's going to sound really weird, but closer to the butt crack is the worst pain I ever felt in my life. Oh. Yeah, it was miserable. And I got that done at a tattoo convention in front of thousands of people. <laughs> Man. Yeah, cheeks out, just... Well, I mean, I wouldn't have recommended that in the first place. No. But, uh, <laughs> see, really, a show nobody expected me to do. <laughs> That's funny. Well, Cap will be, we'll be in Cap's crevices soon. He's running out of space. <laughs> I don't know how far I'm going to go. I really don't. Uh, I just keep thinking of ideas, and I'm like, some of it is just sort of, well, there's still space in particular areas that I don't mind having tattooed. Like, um, I kind of, uh, I kind of think that, 
you know, arms and legs, and maybe eventually back is about as far as I would go. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not interested in the chest tattoo. Yeah. Like, I have no interest in that. I don't yeah. think I would ever do that. And I want to be able to wear a suit, and you'd never know I had tattoos. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, and you're and, still in the early stages with, where... And out. with respect to you, yeah. like, you do whatever you want to. Oh, yeah. I'm not giving you crap for, oh, yeah. for, for your tattoos. Oh, no, no. Um, yeah. But I do sort of like just the, the, uh, the kind of anonymity of mm-hmm. it. I think it is kind of nice to, if you wanted to, to be able to go in public and nobody would ever know you had them. Oh, like, yeah. I think uh, that's, that's, that's kind of... That's way out the window for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's, that's kind of nice. I've still yeah. got that. Uh, so I would probably never do a neck tattoo. Yeah. I wouldn't tattoo out on the hands, I don't think. Yeah, I'm about to get my whole top of my head done and then side of my face. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah, as hard as that. Are, are you going to tell us what? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to Denver for my head. I'm going to shave my head, and I'm going to have giant snakes put on each side with uh, an all-seeing eye on the back of my head, and then, like, money filigree, like, breaking apart down the sides of my face. That's wild. Yeah, I'm going up gonna... to Denver, Colorado to have it done in two-day session. So are you going to, like, commit to always shaving your head, or are you, no, no, you no, just no, going to no, no, no. let just it grow Sarah, over? Just there for a backup, so I've I'm, I'm got, like, a little balding area, but it would be a good backup plan. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm not going to commit to keep my head shaved. I'm way too lazy for that. <laughs> uh, th- yeah, that's that's not a bad idea if you don't mind having a giant eyeball on your head. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I just thought of this. So, over a long period of time, uh-huh. obviously, we see uh, people's tattoos turn green. And I have heard that with newer inks, that doesn't happen it as doesn't much. Happen at all. Yeah. It doesn't happen at all. No, no, because the, the green tattoos, what you see, like your grandpa got tattooed like in the Navy. He was getting indie ink, which is a writing ink. You know, it's made for ballpoint well, pens, not made for tattoos. Like I was saying, now it's a billion dollar industry as far as the, the type of tattoo pigments that are made for tattoos. So they're going to stay black. They're going to stay whatever color you put them in. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So so they'll That's awesome. so they'll fade from they'll fade from, from, from being as bold as they yeah, were. Yeah, they're not going to turn into. But the color, color will yeah. be the same. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it'll still be black. It'll still be a you know. Yeah. And even the lighter yeah, colors, yeah, yeah. colors but, like yellow, but yeah, like when you which see I have to hall. stop doing because you just can't see it in most light. Like I've got, I've got two tattoos now with this yellow outline. Yeah. And in a lot of light, you can't see them. No, I told me it's a bad idea. <laughs> Not a bad idea. But yeah. No. Why didn't you tell me that? No, I did. We just, we just didn't. No, you, <laughs> no, you didn't. I know. Ah, uh, maybe you did. I no, I don't think I did either. I think you just can't. <laughs> that's when I tattooed you and your mom. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's awesome. Uh, she wants another one, by the way. Yeah, totally. And uh, yeah, but and, and I and I don't mean to throw my mom under the bus on stream. <laughs> but uh, she her her first one didn't heal the best. Who did it? Is it the one I did? Yeah, it's the one you did. Oh, it didn't heal that good. And uh-huh. um, she she wants to come in and see you so oh. you can take a look at it. Yeah, for sure. But if I were her, I think I would figure that out before I was committing to a larger one. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. She she wants to do uh, like a, like a phoenix thing. She show me the image she yeah. wants, and it looks cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, it doesn't look bad, but um, I'll show it to you okay, at, yeah, at, at some point because uh, because I don't know if you'll be like that's cool or if you'll be like yeah, have somebody else do that. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I know a guy. No. Yeah, but I uh, I was just a little bit worried about her because I, yeah. I I don't I don't want her to get a more elaborate, more expensive one done, yeah. and then it doesn't heal great. Well, tell so. her just email me a picture of the tattoo, and I can take a look at it and tell her exactly what's going on with it. Yeah. I will. I'm sorry, we're talking shop. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> So speaking of, that's what we do on the channel too. We make all of our plans uh, on on stream, and, and then right out the window. Yeah, and then people say, uh, "No, you, most of them we end up doing." But people are just like, <laughs> "Stop using the Captain Logan show as your your own personal planning." They're like, "Look, my name's in the title, okay." <laughs> So the the big joke for a long time now has been uh, stop it, stop uh, announcing things. So, uh, why? Because you just talk about it for fifteen twenty minutes and then go off on a tangent. We just constantly announce things on the show. Oh. <laughs> Uh, John Kelling yeah. says, Cap, you should get rewind tattooed on your forehead. <laughs> I, I don't think I would do that, although I thought about doing another channel thing at some point. Um, I was telling you earlier about that big spawn project I did. Uh-huh. I thought about doing a spawn your tattoo. Uh, What's the image look like? Well, yeah. I've got different ideas for it. It yeah. probably wouldn't be the logo from Spawn Year, but probably something that's specific to that show and not just Spawn. Do that, yeah. Because that was a real big commitment for me and a, a thing that I look back on real fondly. And um, I thought, do you know, because you said you used to read Spawn. Uh-huh. Do, do you remember the Spawn clock? Uh, no. So, I so I uh, the the early issues and it, that was abandoned like a lot of things because McFarland didn't know where that was going. <laughs> uh, so at some point it just kind of left and it came back, but it was convoluted like a lot of things with that with that book. But anyway, um, there, there's this uh, kind of counter that's that's four numbers. Yeah. And the idea was whenever Spawn uses his powers, uh, the counter 
uh, it counts back, and then if it goes to zero, he remains in hell forever. Oh, that was okay. that was supposed to be the idea, um, and it's like, how can you possibly be consistent with that? <laughs> uh, but anyway, I thought about getting that clock, but the numbers would be the dates that spawn your ran. Oh, okay. I thought that could be cool. Yeah, something like that. We could do together. Yeah, yeah, I'll figure that out. But anyway, that was, that was that was a notion. Speaking of that, uh, yeah. Spider Fan says, "Cap, which would be a worse surprise: waking up with a giant spawn tattoo or a giant tattoo of Uma Thurman from my super ex girlfriend?" Uh, oh, easily the second. <laughs> Partly because no no disrespect to Uma Thurman, but that just sounds like a terrible tattoo. Like, <laughs> I don't even know what that would be. That costume is awful. It, it, it doesn't sound caricaturable, really. Uh, but I thought about getting a giant spawn tattoo, um, d despite my frustrations with that book. Uh, I, I still say Todd McFarlane is my favorite artist and my least favorite writer. And uh, I still love the... I mean, the look of that character was 90% of the appeal for people. Uh, that's why there's still a lot of spawn fans that have no idea that that story is not good, because they didn't read it. They just love what it looks like. Yeah, the art of it, yeah. Yeah. Have you done a spawn? Uh, not in a long time. I'd really like to do another one, yeah. I'd totally be done with that. <laughs> Back in, like, the early 2000s? Uh, yeah, when I, whenever it was first really big and the movie came out, I think I did it and I uh, did a oh, couple. Okay. But not since, like, my style's gotten a lot better, so yeah. Now I like because the movie was like ninety seven. Yeah, I, I started tattooing in ninety eight. So oh, yeah, okay, I, I there you my go. First couple of years, I, I did a couple of swans. See, I keep having it in my head that you, you start like when I'm graduating high school, but I guess it's a little bit earlier. Yeah, than no, ninety eight is when I started tattooing. So, but yeah, and now now that my my uh, ability is a lot better, I'd love to do a, a spot like a really cool close up of the head. I'll think about it. <laughs> could you could you just do the spawn eyes? Yeah, around just, uh, Cap's face, eyes. Yeah. Just oh, give him a spawn face. My wife keeps making jokes about me getting a tattoo on my forehead, and I'm like, you have to stop joking about that. <laughs> like, I'm not probably ever going to do that, but if she taunts me about it enough, like, I, I don't think I would. Well, would just do it in yellow so that it's not seen in most lights. That's a really good idea, actually. Yeah. Uh, DJ, if you ever got a tattoo, let's say you just decided to get one, what would it be? I don't know. I, I, I have nothing against tattoos. For me, it's just I don't yeah. know if there's anything that I would be. I'm not like Elmo. I can't. I, I, I'm not just like I, I don't care. I'm like, <laughs> if I, 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 I don't know if there's anything that I would be happy with forever. Like I, I think I would like like it for a little bit, and then I would be like ah, uh, and I'd want to change it, and I can't. <laughs> yeah. So like I, I don't know if there's something that I would just. I, I can never make up my mind. It's like I can never even make up like a like a username. Like I'm, I'm, I'm like this is gonna be my username forever, and I can't decide like what I want it to be. So like a tattoo is just so. Permanent. He's like I change my internet passwords every three days, and it's not for security. <laughs> I got a lot of my friends that are that aren't into the tattoo scene. That that's not their thing. That's awesome. I don't care. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing about tattoo people, the non-tattoo people, the tattoo people don't give a crap. Yeah. It's like cool. Have fun. Yeah. 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 My wife has three of them. Yeah. Um. And uh, nice. I just and she wants me to get she wants she wants me to get like a real simple one like um like underneath our wedding bands. Yeah. Just like just for us to, to have, yeah. which I'd probably be open to doing that. But yeah. <laughs> Fingers hurt. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I had that thought for like five seconds, and I was yeah. like, you know what? That's probably where I draw the line. I don't. I don't think I'm gonna do that. Now, now, how bad is the back of the hand? Because uh, I see that a lot. It, it sucks. Yeah. Does uh, it really? It just it swells up, so it's uncomfortable to take care of. You know, imagine like your lower leg take care of, but on your hand you can't move it. It's hard. It hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the lower leg was uh, surprisingly not too bad, but it was just such a weird. I really, anything below the knees, I hate getting tattooed. It was such a weird place to get tattooed. Like, yeah. it didn't hurt, it just felt kind of funky. And you have to hold it weird. Yeah. And it was, <laughs> I don't know. Like, like that That was the hardest one to not just, like, move around. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of my favorite ones I've done on you so far. Like, yeah, that was the first one you took a picture of. <laughs> I hardly ever take pictures of any of my tattoos anymore. <laughs> we do it so much. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Everybody's like, I'll take pictures of it. I felt so proud of that choice. <laughs> when you took a picture of it, I was like, yes. That's funny. Uh, did I did I tell you that I, I sent a picture to the artist? Yeah, I think you did. Yeah, yeah. You said you liked it a lot. Or, yeah. yeah, and that's a guy that I that's a Phil, not Mora. Uh, his name's on the tip of my tongue. But anyway, um, he used to do some of the art for the Powerpuff Girls books in the late '90s, early 2000s for DC, and he does a lot of cons. And I met him a couple times at conventions, and um, that was an idea that I had had. 
um, just just doing a mojo bubbles. Yeah. And when I found that that piece, I was like, okay, well, I have to do it because <laughs> that looks really tattooable. Yeah, yeah. When you send me the picture, I'm like, yes, score. All right, perfect. But you fixed the cape. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the cape just all one solid color could tell what it was. Yeah. I should have probably, since we're talking about them so much, I probably should have pulled uh, pictures of the tattoos you've done on me. Oh, uh, yeah. Because <laughs> if, if you guys haven't seen this and you want to, I have to, like, uh, I, don't, I don't know if I can even get I, it up there. I don't think you can stand at that time. I don't think I can do that, but anyway. I saw it for a second. I've never seen you in shorts. <laughs> yeah, uh, I started wearing them this summer because I have this cool bubbles tattoo and nobody gets to see it. <laughs> I'd rather part is if you get like a spa tattoo on the other leg, you got like a really big masculine spa and then you got bubbles. I got bubbles, yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> the reason to do it. <laughs> no, that's fantastic. Here, I'm going to try it. Let's see if I can get this up here. Yeah, there it is. Do, do a lunge. There it is. Look at that. <laughs> do a lunge. Do a barrel roll. <laughs> um... Yeah, well, what else do folks want to talk about? This whole show doesn't have to be tattoos, folks. Yeah, as you say, we talk about whatever. Yeah, yeah, feel free to send me any, any other kind of questions. We've got two more. Um, what would Elmo's advice be for someone getting a tattoo for the first time? Research your artist. Just because the building says tattoo doesn't mean that they're good. Uh, really make sure to check out their portfolios. And it's so uh, oversaturated now, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, like you see yeah, stores everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I can name 10 stores in the Kansas City metro area. I'm not going to name names. But I would not let my you know, worst enemy get tattooed there just because, you know, just because, you know, like I said, just because it says tattoo doesn't mean they're good. So really do your research. Check out portfolios. Uh, don't go in asking about prices right off the, the, the beginning because the price, you know, should be a secondary. You know, you should find an artist you trust, that you vibe with, and that you like their style. So. And then trust your artist. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't be too overly picky. That's one of my big things, too. What is because I've I've seen different I've done some research about this stuff now oh. since I'm getting tattoos yeah. and um, I'm I'm curious to know because I'm seeing a lot of debate online about it what uh, the general like modern convention like expectation is for tattoo tipping now oh uh, I mean it's the same as anything service industry like you know 10 15 20 percent on average you know somewhere in there yeah. No, like, it's not expected. Like, tattoo artists, we don't expect to get tipped. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I was just kind of curious, because I saw, like, horror stories where somebody would do, like, a really expensive tattoo, and then uh, the tip would be kind of small. Yeah. And, and, and then, and, and then uh, <laughs> I got a million the artist those... would be very upset. Oh, yeah. I've never been upset about it. I've got a million of those stories. So, like, I'm always like, yeah, whatever, you know, because I, I get paid enough for the actual tattoo. The tip's just icing on the cake, you know? Yeah, I never got the artist that got mad about not getting tipped, like... Well, I mean, obviously the main reason I've been working with you so huh? much and having you do um, really all of mine now uh, is because I, I like your work. Yeah. And you're, you're so good at color. Yeah. Uh, the, the, sh the shading and everything is, is, is lovely, and you create um, so much depth. Well, and that's, um, that's what I was saying to the person that, you know, online uh, or you know, on the, the chat, is find somebody that fits the style that you want to get tattooed, you know? That person might want to get, like, black-gray tattoos, so find the person that's the best at doing that, and then, yeah. and then go with them, yeah. But I was going to say, but the, but the main reason I've kept going with you uh -huh. is because you're so relaxed about that kind of stuff. So, I mean, like, you know, I, I have tipped you for tattoos. Uh -huh. And, uh, but I, I always, I always feel like I, I get, like, really reasonable prices from you. Oh, and you. Yeah. Well, and you, I'm not trying to make the whole thing just a, a commercial for Elmo. Uh, although, yeah. if you're in the area, you should yeah. go see Elmo. Oh, if, yeah, if, the more, more you get tattooed by one person, the more you kind of yeah. build that bond with that person. Like, you kind of, like, start knowing what they, what they want, what they expect, and you build friendships, you know? So, so hit, now I'm doing a podcast. So, yeah, no. <laughs> Well, and it's nice to have that kind of shorthand where, you know, if you do two or three with a person and they get a good sense of your personality oh, yeah. and uh, the, the kinds of things you like. Because, like, I really trust you now to the point where <laughs> I think I could hand you a character yeah. and walk away, yeah. blindfold myself when you tattoo me and, trust and, have, and have no idea what I'm getting and then look in the mirror. And now that I'm saying all this, yeah. I want to do that because <laughs> I think that would be awesome. That would be a funny Um the, the Ninja Turtle tattoo I, I want yeah. is probably a thing to do that with. Okay. Where, where if, if I went, uh, look, Eastman and Laird, you you got you got to go back to 1984. Okay. And it's got to be Mirage Comics. Yeah. And it's got to be, uh, so not the 87 cartoon. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's got to be the, the, that, the yeah. actual Eastman and Laird art. Mm. So it's got to, it's got to, you know, look edgier. Uh, rougher, it's got to uh, be yeah. during the period where you could, you could only tell the difference between the turtles by the weapons they were holding. Yeah, yeah they're all the and, same color. Man. And it's got to be in black and white. Yeah. And, and if I, if I gave you uh, you just that agenda. Yeah, oh, uh, it would be so cool one. to see what you would come up okay. with. Okay, I'm down. 
first. <laughs> I wouldn't even uh, tell you what turtle it had to be. Yeah. Because my answer to favorite Ninja Turtle, and I'll ask you in a second what yours is, but my, my answer to favorite Ninja Turtle is always, uh, it just depends on, on which version we're talking about, which iteration. Yeah. Uh, so if you, like, I'm not a big Michelangelo fan, but if you came up with, like, the most kick-ass Michelangelo. See, I'm a big Michelangelo yeah, fan. That's, when I was a kid, that was I, always my I'd guy. Go, I'd go for that. I mean, I, like, Donatello is usually my guy, but what it depends you, on the iteration. What year did they come out with the first cartoon? 87. 87? Yeah, that's back when I was a kid. Well, me too, but I was only three. Uh, I'm just a couple years older than yeah. So the show was, uh, yeah. Sorry about uh, Facebook. My my, uh, my my family's all messaging each other right now, and I couldn't <laughs> turn that off. Anyway, which uh, one's your favorite uh, Ninja Turtle? Usually Donatello. Donatello. Uh, but like I said, it, it, it depends on the iteration. So uh, in IDW, uh, in the more recent comics, it's absolutely Donatello. Um, okay, you guys, seriously. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm about to say something to my wife, I think. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, but yeah, so Michelangelo is usually yours. Yeah. Like, like uh, if you go to the 1990 movie, yeah. uh, it, it, just that it's probably Raphael, and Raphael was probably was, was most everybody's <laughs> in that in that movie. The live action ones, oh, yeah, so awesome. Yeah, <laughs> Vanilla Ice. No, they're wonderful. <laughs> I actually need to go back and watch those. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's that's what that, uh, that's Super what Super Shredder. Shredder's from. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we were just we were just talking well, about this before we started streaming. Um, yeah, DJ, just the stuff I can just grab off the desk. Oh, dude, it's, it's uh, great. So, yeah, super so Super Shredder has been merchandised a lot recently, uh, especially from Pop and and uh, Funko, and also from NECA. Uh, NECA NECA has a really realistic looking. I actually have a couple, and I kind of like to get one of those too. So something I'm, I'm not not even on purpose, but I guess I'm starting a Super Shredder collection. Ooh. He was on screen for forty seconds. <laughs> But I love that design. And spoilers for the new Ninja Turtles game that that, uh, that came out. Um, but he is uh, the big boss at the end of that. And I was kind of expecting they would do that, but it didn't disappoint. It's Isn't the name of the game fucking it's Super wonderful. Shredder? No, it's Shredder's Revenge. But, Shredder's if, Revenge but, yeah. but that's a good point. Because if <laughs> Shredder is going to come back in those games and get revenge and he doesn't turn into to Super Shredder... Yeah. The fans are going to come at you with pitchforks. How would you not do that? Uh, Because Super Shredder is in Turtles in Time, or maybe not that one. But one of those beat-em-ups, he's he's there. So anyway. (laughs) All right, let's get to the real important ones. Unknown Passenger. (laughs) Unknown Passenger. Oh, my God, Cap isn't in his underwear. Is that what you were going to (laughs) say? No, no. (laughs) I'm not. I I proved it. Unknown passenger, uh, you don't know if I am or, or not, though. <laughs> Unknown passenger, no, if really Cap don't. had to get a tattoo on his face for the rest of his life, yeah. what would it be? You know, the one, and this wouldn't be mine, but the one that uh, Austin keeps talking about is Dr. Manhattan. The, oh. the circle with the dot in the middle. That's that's a good idea. If you had somebody that was a big Watchmen fan and they just for some reason had to have a tattoo on their face, that's, that's not a bad idea. That is a sixty dollar tattoo. Yeah, I've had people want to get the last Airbender arrow. I'm just oh like, really? Oh, good Lord, don't do that. <laughs> don't do yeah, that. Don't do that. Yeah, that's you're definitely not gonna be horrible ever again. <laughs> <laughs> but with respect, is that not kind of just true with tattoos on the face? Oh yeah, yeah. At like, all? I won't tattoo anybody under twenty five. I won't tattoo their hands and face or neck or anything like that. Mm-hmm. No. Does tattoo cosplay bother you? What do you mean? I mean, people that would want a thing like that, where it's like, I want a tattoo that that is like a permanent part of a costume. Like, is that too silly? Does, uh, that, does that bug yes, you? Yes, uh, yes, yes, it does. Like, I've uh, seen pictures of, of people... Spider-Man I just, sleeves, like, tattoo where it looks like they're wearing the sleeve. Is that what you're talking I about? Th- yeah. That sort of thing, or I think this is so corny, because I want a Star Trek tattoo. We yeah. were talking about this earlier. Yeah. Um, I don't know I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I want something. Yeah. And I'm having a hard time landing on something that a thousand other people don't have. Yeah. What uh, what I've seen a few people do is rank pips on the neck. Yeah, I think that's so stupid. Yeah, I don't I don't like that. That bothers me, <laughs> and I don't think it would bother me if it was someplace else. Yeah. it's just that like right there, like if right. you put if if you went okay, I want like Captain Pips here. Yeah, that's not stupid to me. Yeah, but if you put it on your neck, it's like I'm always wearing a Starfleet uniform. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, to each your own on that. But yeah, yeah, sure. But yeah, the same way. I think it's cheesy whenever people get like. Uh, I just think it's uh, cheesy. Yeah. Oh, I totally concur. Like, people I, can do I, whatever I they want to get a, a Spider-Man sleeve 
Like, it looks like his arms, like the Spider-Man. His arms, like, oh, that's stupid. <laughs> Although, I could totally see you, Cap, getting the, the black suit, like, rectangle on the hand thing. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a costume. Yeah, that's still... It's still too cheesy to me. I don't know. And, <laughs> uh, you know, like, if you, if, if you decided to get a tattoo of a watch where a watch goes. <laughs> yeah, I no. think that's weird. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, don't I just know you like the, the symbiote suit a lot. No, I do like the symbiote suit a lot. <laughs> you, should, you should get the symbiote spider on your chest. That's what I'm saying is I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't put it on my chest. If I was going to get that, and I, and I won't with that, but if I was going to get that image, I'd put it someplace else. It'd be on an arm or yeah. be on a leg or something. Yeah. Um, at one point, I thought about, I don't mean to make this whole show just about tattoos Cap would get, <laughs> um, but at one point, well, look, I'm sorry, my name's in the title. At one point, I, I considered getting the logo for Spider-Man 2099. Uh, the New Age one? I uh, no no uh, twenty twenty ninety nine. Uh, Miguel O'Hara. I'm sure. like, it looks like a skull kind of. With yeah, the it, it looks like a, almost a cross between a Punisher and a in a Spider Man logo. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, oh, wow. it's it's this. That is right. Uh, I think that would be a kick ass tattoo. That could be done really cool. Sir. Yeah. yeah. That is dope. Yeah. I'm totally down with it. And it looks like the Punisher mix with Spider-Man. Yeah, That's and funny. I and I've seen some that are kind of long, like like longer. Yeah. This one, like if you did it this way. Yeah. Uh, that would look cool on a leg or something. Oh, that definitely would. I, I think. Uh, but what I would want to do with it so that it it's uh, a little bit clearer. Oh, people can't actually see what I'm showing. Um, but so that it's a little bit clearer that it's 2099. Yeah. I would want um some blue in it also. Oh yeah. Because yeah. uh, that costume is. This is by the way my my favorite um. Spider-Man costume right. uh, is, is the 2099 What do you think suit? about the, the newest video game? The last one? Um, I enjoy it. I think there's too much busy work in it. Oh, yeah. Uh, and the graphic space. But... And I will... Oh, you gotta, get, you gotta get in camera here. Oh, sorry. No, that's all right. Our aspect <laughs> ratio is all crapped out now. Anyway, um, but... Yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, I, I still stand by the Mary Jane sequences are uh, long and pointless and boring, and, <laughs> yeah. I, and I, I wish those weren't there. Uh, I don't care what anybody says. I don't like those. But um, I'm not like Austin. <laughs> he, he hates that game for some reason. I, 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 think, it's, I think it's fun, uh, but it's, it's too many hours. And I had the opposite with that. These guys have heard me say this before, but, <laughs> I, but you and I haven't talked about this. Um, I think it's I, I have the opposite thing with it that I did with Arkham. Yeah. Where with the Arkham game, particularly City, but with the Arkham games, I was so immersed in story that I couldn't get excited about running off and doing side stuff. Yeah. And in Spider Man, all I wanted to do was the side missions. So <laughs> I completed so much of the side stuff in that game before I even got to like the first act plot point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the exact same thing I have, Cap. I I just want to be Spider-Man, and this, the the side stuff in that is so boring and repetitive, and it's just run over here and fight this group of this gang of guys and this gang of guys, and, and there wasn't enough variety in the in the side stuff. It, it, there was even more variety in like Spider-Man Two, way back in the day. Well, yeah, and that game is still fun, by the way. But I guess what I mean is there were there were some side things that I was enjoying doing more, like all the all the extra fights and things that aren't story driven I'm with you that stuff is busy work and boring I uh, because I, I don't mean to be a hypocrite like I uh, like some of the stuff that I didn't like in that game is side stuff but what I mean is I spent four hours just going and getting all the backpack tokens yeah. before I was doing any of the story stuff because it was fun yeah yeah that's what I'm saying like that, I, I, I like cause yeah I don't care about the story, so I never replay the story. So I want the side stuff to be fun because I can just go in and just play Spider-Man for a little bit. But the side stuff isn't after you do it all. Like then it, it's not fun. After and that. the combat in that game is in some ways the wrong kind of challenge for me. It's almost like if you took this is too extreme, but to some degree, it's <laughs> almost like if you took the tank stuff in uh, Arkham Knight and integrated it with the hand-to-hand -hand fighting stuff. Like, some of it's kind of tedious to me. So like, the, so, like, the Batman fights, I got really into, and I, and, and I tried to get good at that. Yeah. Spider-Man, I was like, eh, I kind of just want to swing around. I'm kind of done fighting people. Yeah. I don't know. That's funny. Have you played uh, Ghost of Tsushima? The fighting in that is just amazing. I suck at it, so I haven't gotten oh. far enough in it. But I like. No, yeah, we we talked about this. Oh. I love that game. I oh. just haven't gotten very far. Oh man, I, I, you're gonna tell I'm, me you finished it. Oh, right? I did. Yeah. Of course yeah. you. Did. I'm one of those people. Like, if I get into a game, I just play it like nonstop religiously until I beat it. Yeah. I uh, no, that game is gorgeous. Yeah, and the, the fighting and the, and the, and the combat so is fun. wonderful, and yeah. 
know what's neat. Um, I just thought it was going to be hard. Oh, it definitely is. I'm not good at... Oh, okay. I'm glad it wasn't just me. Oh, no, yeah. No, I'm, not, no. I'm not good at modern games. I'm, I'm such a retro gamer. Yeah. <laughs> that when I... And I've learned to own that. Yeah. Because for a long time, I was really self-conscious about it. I was like, can I even call myself a video... Like, like, a, <laughs> like a gamer, like a video game fan? Yeah. Despite the fact that I have, like, this massive... Not massive, but I have a pretty good game collection. And I've got an arcade in my basement. But even, like... Even when I was up to like ten arcade machines, I was like, "Am I am I really a video game person? <laughs> yeah. I don't know." And then and then finally, I decided, "Oh yeah, retro gamer is a type of gamer. Like you can be <laughs> more into that. It's yeah. it's okay. You know, like um, my thing is platformers. That's come back in a big way. Oh yeah, like you're not not a video game person if all if the main thing you play is platformers." So I've learned to be more okay with that about myself. But occasionally something will come out where the, the aesthetic of it is too cool to not try. Yeah. And that's what I have with Ghosts of, 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 uh, of uh, Sushi. But we, we, uh, Austin and I always call it Ghosts of, Su of Sushi. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, that, that came out, and um, <laughs> lately, in the last few years, I, I've gotten more into like kind of Japanese culture and stuff. And uh, that just seems so up my alley. Oh, yeah. And, and the writing in it is really good. And, have yeah. you played the new uh, Horizon? No. Oh, man, the graphics in it are just insane. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that kind of op open world stuff, I always like in theory, but... <laughs> Until you start doing it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just too overwhelming for me. It's too much going on. I don't yeah. know. But I haven't tried enough of it either, so... Uh, like, I've always wanted to try a Fallout, but I just haven't done it. Yeah, I haven't done any of the Fallout games, though. I mean, I bought yeah. New Vegas on Steam when it was on sale over Christmas, and I still haven't tried it. <laughs> I bought like hundred and fifty dollars worth of worth of games on Steam over Christmas, uh, a bunch of stuff that was just super super cheap, and most of it I haven't tried yet. <laughs> I need to do that. Uh, well, does anybody want to steer us in a different direction, DJ, or is everybody finished with tonight's edition of the Captain Logan Show? <laughs> Um, I have got some from earlier that I could go to. <laughs> oh, uh, Video Game Secrets wants to know, would you either That's my be... Son Jason. Would you rather be a tattoo artist or a barber? Or a barber? I'd definitely be a tattoo artist, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> definitely up my alley, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely losing my hair, so I'm not really good at that one. <laughs> Is he asking the panel or just the, the tattoo artist? Yeah. I don't know. Are we getting a running trend um, from everybody? Yeah. Like, I would have to go for Barber, even though I don't want to learn how to do that either, just because <laughs> I can't draw. I'm yeah. like, I'm not an artist. It's just a lot easier yeah, to I, someone's hair than do, draw. But yeah, I Especially screw on, up. Them, on their person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it's hard enough just to make a, a person look like a person to yeah. me. <laughs> That's funny. You know, you go to Elmo, it's like, tattoo a dog. Okay. Yeah. You go to me, draw a dog. <laughs> draw me a stick figure. <laughs> I don't... I don't think it's going to look enough like a dog, you guys. <laughs> awesome. Um, let me see. So at the beginning of the show, Daniel Davis says, Hey yeah. guys, what's a bad movie that fascinates you? For me, it's the canon musical The Apple. I'll ask that one more time. What's a bad movie that fascinates you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm working on the rewind right now for Suicide Squad, and uh, <laughs> I don't understand how that came together the way it did. I might say this on Sunday, uh, but I, I've done my first watch for that, and uh, that is so much worse than I remembered it. Oh, it's horrible. Somehow. Yeah. Uh, that That is not a movie. <laughs> it's not. It has... So so the, many great pieces go together, and then it's just all crap. Yeah. It's... Uh, well, and, and that's one of those movies where the... the you've got a trailer that m makes it look like there could be something there and like yeah. it's, it's super stylized uh, and, and it looks like potentially a lot of fun and then you go to the movie and you're like oh it's two hours of trailer <laughs> yeah and it was edited by the people that edited the trailer <laughs> so it's all the so same. that's why but the the, uh, the first part of that so let's say it's in three acts but not like a typical three act structure of a story yeah. like it's not unfolding like you know a narrative so the first act of that movie is a prologue that was intended to be shown before the film, but not during the film, right? And then the second part of it is a like like a one-off episode of a mediocre action TV show, <laughs> and then the third act is the uh, first draft of the third act of Guardians of the Galaxy. Like they fixed it, and then they gave us that, but. But but we saw the first draft two years later. That's that's what it watches like. Like it's not a movie. Yeah. So yeah, 
it's it's bizarre. It's not as fascinating as BVS, but um, because I actually somehow understand what's happening in it more than BVS, which really tells you something. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I don't I don't I don't have a better answer at the moment though. Um, we got another one from Daniel Davis. Growing up, what would you say was your dream job? Uh, he always wanted to be a stand-up comedian. Man, I, I, I had that when I was when I was a lot younger. Um, but tattooing was like in your family, right? Yeah, yeah, it was in my family. When I was a little kid, I really wanted to work for Marvel. Really bad. Like, I really wanted to be a comic book artist so bad. Uh, and then tattooing, once I got older and realized like what's actually doable. You know. But when I was a little kid, it would definitely be my dream job was to work for Marvel. You had to find a way to, to draw and pay the bills. Oh, Disney. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's hard to be an artist <laughs> and pay the bills, so yeah. But it's also nice to, I mean, I mean, you do kind of have that sweet spot where at least you get to be creative. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love my job, yeah. Like, I love that aspect of it. Like, I like the, the fact that I don't have to deal with an HR. I don't have to deal with bosses, per se. You know, I get to draw and doodle and sit on my butt all day and, you know, make decent money. So, yeah. We haven't even mentioned the name of your shop, and I should oh, have done yeah. that at the beginning of the oh, show. Yeah, my, yeah, apology. Yeah, yeah, my, yeah. my apologies, but no, uh, electric, electric Iron. Yep, yeah, on uh, 55th and Troost. Yeah, in Kansas City. I was going to say, is that technically Casey Mall? Yeah, 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 Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah. And there are, what, three artists that work there? Uh, five. Oh, five? Yeah. You just oh, I don't know that. why I thought there were only three. No, okay. because whenever you come in, you never see the other ones. <laughs> no, I'm joking. So, um, you don't have to answer this if it's too inside huh? baseball, but I've just been kind of curious. Like, is there an owner of that shop? Yeah, that's Avery, the guy that did your other two. Oh, Avery things. does yeah. own the shop. Yeah. Okay, yeah, interesting. But uh, the, way, the way tattoo shops work is, like, the employees, like, pay a percentage out. Like, I have a boss, but I, I'm really I, I'm, uh, uh, self, self-contracted. self Like, I pay my own taxes. I just pay a percentage out to the shop of what I tattoo. Okay. So, yeah, I don't really per se have a boss, but I do. That's that's a really nice best of both worlds kind of situation. Oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Because you can do your job your way. Yeah, <laughs> and if I if I don't want to work one day, I just schedule off early. Like tonight, I schedule off. No, we work till eight and it's strip out early. Yeah, so. that's really nice. Yeah. Sorry if I cost you money though. Oh no, I don't give a crap. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no I schedule uh, in advance enough to know. Yeah. So, uh, Spider Fan, do you think the comic book industry would be better if Image Comics never came into existence? Wow. Uh, well, I mean, the clear answer to that really is no. Um, I mean, like, there's, like I always say, there's pros and cons to everything. Uh, image, let me also say it depends on what aspect we're talking about, right? So, like, if, if we're just talking about the, the growth and success of the comic industry, uh, you have to have image for... The, the whole kit and caboodle to uh, to, to keep limp, limping along like it did. Uh, and then to have kind of the resurgence it did. It, like, if, if you don't have Walking Dead in the mid-2000s, I don't know what the comic industry looks like. Um, but early on, like, I think what he's probably getting at is uh, the Rob Liefeld effect, the ways that, uh, you know, people, artists at the big two and really uh, all the different companies kind of chasing images coattails uh, in the early 90s, trying to be as edgy as humanly possible yeah. and all of that. Um, yeah, there were major detriments. Is that the reason that the crash happened, though? I think the crash had a lot more to do with too many variant covers and uh, oversaturation and, and, all, and all of that. <laughs> um, so it really just depends on what aspect we're talking about. But I think... Uh, I, I, th- I think image is, uh, is really important to the more modern success of the comic industry. Okay, what do you think about the influx of, I'm sure y'all talk about this uh, ad nauseum, oh, sure. the, the influx of like the, the comic book movies, like, you know, you know being done nine, 900 million ways, like, what do you think that does to the comic book industry? Do you think it helps it or hurts it? It turns it into a commercial for them. Oh, for sure. And that's kind of the big problem with the big two, especially in, in recent years. Yeah. Uh, is th- this corporate synergy problem? Yeah, of it's really not a, as enough about. And there's and there's pockets. There's individual books. Yeah. that are still. Uh, but but it's usually like smaller, more under the radar stuff uh, that's going its own way and just telling cool stories and isn't as concerned about that. And yeah, it, it is a thing we talk about a lot. Uh, what I what I always say with this is, um, I I understand the business end of it, and of course this is all. A, a commercial business so I yeah. mean you you have to do things that will make you money but you hope that you can be as creative as possible at the I same time way, yeah. so uh, what 
so the the part of it that I understand is a a big tentpole Marvel movie is coming out. Uh, let's make sure that there's a book on the shelves about that and that the status quo doesn't look too far removed from it. I, I get that to some degree, right? So, like, I'm not going to begrudge Marvel if a, a Black Panther movie comes out and they didn't have a Black Panther book, but now they have one. Yeah. Like, like of course. Yeah. But if the story they decide to tell is just, uh, let's... Let's not adapt from material, but let's uh, put out something that will kind of foreshadow what we're doing in the movies or, uh, like, test the waters for it or whatever. Um, that's when you end up with not a lot of, like, real creative juices flowing. Yeah. That's, that's, that's that's my problem with it. And that, that's kind of where we're sitting at oh. right now. So, it's depressing, but it's true. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> video game secrets what's your favorite art style for comics or animated series mine uh, sure don't why don't you start I don't know no what do you mean like, <laughs> what would start? like yeah, I don't know I, um... like do you like like let's just let's just go to cartoons like uh, like just just your own personal taste like are you a more uh, like real cartoony guy. Yeah, yeah. Do you want like ultra bright, stylized, colors, or do yeah. you want things to look real ultra realistic? Are you like an anime guy? Uh, like... No, no, I'm not an anime guy. I never have been. I like the the art manga. Like as far as like yeah. still, still still frame art. Never got into the actual anime live action movie. Uh, as far as like if I'm watching an animated series or something like that, it's or cartoons. It's more like uh, I'm sure y'all hate it, but like the Family Guy, the you know. Uh, oh sure. Yeah, uh, SpongeBob, the real bright, colorful cart, you know, cartoony stuff. Not more to the, not what do you call it? Like photorealistic. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Not were, into that. were you a Cartoon Network guy? Oh yeah, yeah, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, yeah, all those Scooby Doo group on that, yeah. Um, Gindy Tartakovsky, like uh, Samurai Jack and oh, yeah. Dexter's Lab. Yeah, and, I love those. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Adult Swim, I like. Uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, remember them? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's huge. I love those. My, uh, yeah, my response to that is. Uh, and this is this is Jason again. Hi, Jason. My <laughs> my response to that is, uh, and I'm a broken record. Is just it just it depends. It, like it, it it really just depends on what the thing is uh, is trying to accomplish. But there are certain styles that I uh, tend to repel me more than others. Yeah. So like I can be won over on stuff uh, if it just really fits the material. But generally, if it's so uh, like surreal. That I can't tell what's going on. Yeah. I don't tend to care for that kind of art style. And I uh, like mid to late two thousands Cartoon Network got to that place and I just couldn't get into it. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Like for examples, like what would you say? Well, I don't know because I wasn't actually oh, okay. watching okay. those <laughs> shows. <laughs> really, everything point. after Foster's Home. Oh. Because okay. I never really watched that show. Yeah. And like a lot of a lot of stuff that came after that. Um, I think probably the breaking point for me was Courage the Cowardly Dog. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't get into that. You didn't like Courage. I couldn't. Like I, couldn't I couldn't do it. Oh. It uh, was the wrong kind of creepy. For my <laughs> taste. Show freaked me out as a kid. Although uh, they have just released a another DJ because they do so many of these Scooby Doo crossover directed video movie with Courage the Cowardly Dog, yeah. and I'm very curious about that. I'm not I even saw, a big I fan of either of those properties, but coming back and doing that 20 years later, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little Scooby Doo. I'm a little curious, and a lot of that stuff has been pretty good. Uh, the 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 crossover Scooby Doo show that they did a few years ago was really good. Uh, the few episodes of that that I saw where uh, they it's still did, going. That's is it now. still on? I didn't really? know that. Yeah. Um, they they kind of went back to that Sco that new Scooby Doo movies format, and mm -hmm. they did a Weird Al episode. They did mm -hmm. a Batman episode, and uh, yeah, th 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 those were really good. But some of the direct to video movies they've been doing have been really good too. Uh, the Brave and the the Batman Brave and the Bold crossover uh -huh. is fantastic. Uh, everybody should watch that. It's 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 great. Um, we we did a we did a blind commentary on it when it came out, and uh, I've seen it again since then. It's really good. But I've also heard really good things about all of the, and I'm not into this, but all of the animated wrestling crossover movies they've been doing. Like, there's a WWE Jetsons movie. Really? And a couple other things. Yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah. People say those are wonderful. Really? Like, They're I, just mashing everything together. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a little uh, curious about those. Um, Spider Fan, I know this is a semi sensitive subject, but Cap, do uh -oh. you think the current divisiveness in geekdom as it relates to MCU and the DCEU 
can ever be healed or is it a permanent in your opinion? No, that's a good question. I'm not going to spend a bunch of time on it right now. I don't want to get all heavy. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's, it's hard to see the forest for the trees and it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel, right? Uh, it, it feels like at the moment um, it, it's, it's hard to get past that kind of stuff because of, uh, you know, fan vitriol and, and, and such, where it kind of feels like we've been in this place for a long time, even when people were liking, uh, you know, some of the, the movies that were coming out better uh, than right now. But we're in this weird place now where you've got uh, kind of a couple of factions of MCU fans where there's people kind of walking away because they think it's it's too watered down and samey now. And there's some political stuff there too that I won't get into. And then you have uh, a, another camp that everything they put out is great and it seems to kind of not matter what and I mean I, I don't I don't want to I don't want to speak for any particular person and say if you love everything that Marvel's coming out you don't have a brain I'm not <laughs> saying that but for some people it does sort of feel that way yeah. where, where the I guess what I'm saying is uh, the whole brand loyalty thing yeah. which I've never understood and I've never appreciated and like I'm gonna watch a thing and I'll tell you afterwards if I liked it or not I'm not gonna go um, you know MCU, MCU is great, movie, yeah. so this movie must be great. Yeah. Uh, I I don't I don't have that mentality. Um, I think DC obviously has uh, a higher rope to climb. I think that Marvel is not in a straight up danger zone yet. Uh, I think that there are folks that are not as interested or are kind of walking away right now that could potentially be won back. I really do. I think that the um, I don't think that they've totally ruined their credibility, even necessarily with people that at the moment are very lukewarm with them. Uh, DCEU, and this is just me, not everybody feels this way, They and I've said this before, but they need to lose all their baggage. It is time for a full-on reboot if they want to be a shared universe anymore. And what they really should be doing is, because the best movies they've made in the last few years have just been random one-off things that they've tried that aren't really set in another continuity or are so ambiguous it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like the Suicide Squad and, and, and of course uh, like things like, like uh, Joker and the Batman which are in separate continuities and just their own thing and they're going to keep making movies but they don't have to be tied to another continuity and then when a thing really works then you build from that and start doing a shared universe. So I don't care that Shazam was pretty good and that the sequel might be great. And I don't care that I didn't hate Aquaman. It's time to put those things to bed because they are stuck with uh, all this baggage from this continuity that has never made sense and is still so splintered and random and bizarre. Uh, so yeah, that's the first step for them. And if Flash really is kind of a Flashpoint sort of thing where they're going to use that to kind of start over the universe, um, it could work. I'm, I'm not holding my breath on that because I'm afraid they're still going to be stuck with some of that baggage. Um, I think they should start all that completely over and just move forward with a new uh, shared universe out of something that is working for them. Yeah. Any of the things that are working <laughs> for them. So, yeah. A um, couple people just recommending things you should watch, Cap. Blue Dragon 5 says Cap should watch Kid Cosmic. Uh, I might finally do that. I started it uh, at one point, and then I got distracted and I forgot to go back to it. But that's, I think, uh, that's that Craig McCracken show on Netflix mm. where he is, Craig McCracken created Power Puff Girls oh, okay. um, and Foster's Home, and he, he is, that, that show is uh, him finally doing something more serialized, I think. Yeah. And AMC Comics also said, oh, Cap, you have to check out Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, it just looks so random and weird. I couldn't get excited. Have you ever watched that? Uh, uh-uh, I haven't seen it. Is it with uh, Netflix? No, no, no. That's 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 Card Network. That that's the the thing that Craig McCracken did right after Powerpuff Girls. Oh yeah, no, I haven't so seen it. So that's just after our time with Cartoon Network. Oh okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, I've seen some of that, and I've never seen Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> okay, but good. Do you like that show? Or I don't remember. It was it was a long time ago when I was a little. When I used to watch the Batman, it was on the same network. He was Fine. just consuming. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that is pretty much. What else did I see? Ah, uh, AMC Comics. Have you looked into Marvel's Midnight Suns? My interest is starting to be piqued as it is starting to resemble a Bioware game. Yeah, I saw a 
trailer for that last week, but I don't think it had any gameplay in it. I still can't get a sense of what that of, of what the gameplay with that game is. Uh, I think it's supposed to be like a strategy thing. It doesn't sound like something I would play, mm, but nice. it you know graphics and stuff that look it looks fine. Um, it's it's fun that they're doing that corner of of Marvel, I guess. Uh, that it's it's like dark magic and stuff. Um, occult stuff. Again, real mid '90s stuff. To, <laughs> yeah, when everything got super dark and dreary. Yes, but insanely over the top and silly, which I guess is supposed to make it lighter. Yeah. And if you go back and read some of that stuff, it absolutely does. Um, yeah, guys, just... I don't, I don't want to talk about the Ezra Miller thing. I really yeah. don't. Yeah, people just talking about. Or agreeing or disagreeing with your thoughts on the DCEU. Ryder says, no, I love Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn still. You can't throw her away. Um, I think you can, but <laughs> I, I like her as that character as well, but she's been in three different movies now as three slightly different incarnations of that character. I don't know if any of it really counts together. Uh, look, if they wanted to do a full-on reboot and keep a couple of the actors that have been working but be just real concrete about and, and not so vague about what counts and what doesn't, I'm more on board with that I guess. That's not what I would do. I would start over completely and I would get rid of everybody. Um, but just to lose the baggage. But that's just me. Um, no, I, I like her too. I just haven't liked anything they've done with her yet. She's fine in the Suicide Squad, but they keep her kind of in the background. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, I've seen, unfortunately, yes, I did. No, no, the new one. Oh, no, I haven't not Suicide Squad, the Suicide oh, Squad. Yeah, it's different. That's James movie Gunn's maybe. movie. Yeah, great movie. <laughs> movie. Did you not know about that? No, no, I didn't. It has Starro, and he's wonderful. Oh, they fight Lord. a giant Starro at the end. Oh, it's good Lord. awesome. They have this thing where I boycott Ben Affleck, so I haven't seen anything with him in it. So any of the Batman. Oh, you haven't seen BBS or anything? Mm -mm. And your brain thanks you for it. Yeah. But, um. <laughs> ben Affleck's horrible. That's just me. I don't have that, but. Oh yeah, yeah. We've talked about this. He has, he has this, he has this, this thing, this, this, just like seething irrational hatred. Oh yeah, for I will not Affleck. watch anything with Ben Affleck. Like I'll just get up, walk out of the air. Yeah. I'm gonna invite you over sometime for a, <laughs> for a, for, a, for a, like a like a movie night, but I'm not gonna tell you what we're watching. <laughs> and then it's gonna it's gonna be the uh, Son of a it's not even gonna be the the director's cut of Daredevil. It's uh, gonna be the theatrical oh, version Lord, that yeah. makes no oh, sense. Lord, yeah. That's what we're gonna do. Yay. It'll be great. Well, it's gonna be as bad as Green Lantern. <laughs> It'll be great. And you don't have a car, so you'll just be stuck yeah. here. <laughs> well folks, um Last call for questions. If there's anything else you guys want us to talk about to elongate the show a little longer, feel free. Otherwise, we're going to bid you farewell tonight. I've got one more. I know this was kind of a, diff a different one, and I apologize for all my technical difficulties at the beginning. You noticed uh, no issue since then. Maybe it's just that camera. I don't know. Like, the camera was working. It just isn't playing nice. I don't. I don't know what's going on. Anyway. We got one more from Spider Fan. Uh, what do you think of characters such as the Ninja Turtles or Harley Quinn, where there are different incarnations that people view differently? Do you think that is a good or bad thing? Hmm. Uh, it's really weird. Like the, the new Joker movie with the. Did you put your glasses on? Whoa! whoa where did Elmo go? go? No! 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 no. <laughs> where, oh, do you hear what he said? What did he say? <laughs> where did Elmo yeah. go? No, whenever they brought in like the the Joaquin Phoenix Joker is on a totally different timeline. Yeah. So yeah, so that's not gonna play at all. But I lo I love the character. I love that movie a lot. So. No, it's good. Yeah, but like uh, whenever they, well, I don't like when they keep bringing in like different Spider Mans or say you know what I'm saying like three in like the last five years. That's always kind of hard to keep up with. Yeah. But yeah, but what about you? What do you mean? Well, it, read it again because I'm not totally sure what he's getting at. What do you think of characters such as the Ninja Turtles or Harley Quinn, where there are different incarnations that people view differently? Do you think that is a good thing or a bad thing? So my, I, I don't know if I'm quite latching on to his meaning, but I assume what he's talking about is uh, characters that there might not be a definitive version of where I, because because with with like a Batman or a Superman, uh, most of us have a real specific, even though there are tons of different versions of those yeah. things, and uh, they're not always entirely about all the same things, there's there's real, there, there's a concrete 
kind of spirit to those things. Okay, I so like if Batman uh, didn't have his parents killed when he was younger, yeah. and if he carries a gun, and if you know what I mean, he people aren't going to view him as Batman, yeah, yeah. or 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 not as much. Um, but you're right, characters like like Ninja Turtles and Harley Quinn, but especially Harley Quinn, because uh, because Ninja Turtles I don't agree with as much if if I'm reading his question right. Um, but but somebody like Harley Quinn is is kind of a character that's a little bit more of a blank slate or has been treated that way. Yeah. Um, where like if if you look at Dini uh, and the way he originally created that character for animated series and what was done with her right after that, there there is kind of. I think at one time we thought of a definitive version of her, but she's been reinvented in so many different ways. I think she's almost actually the antithesis to a Ninja Turtles or a Batman, where I don't see Harley Quinn as a real versatile character. I see her as a character that keeps changing because of trends, because what a lot of people like about her is... I uh, just the just the popularity and the meaningness of her. It's yeah. it's kind of like Deadpool, and yeah. she can be a really interesting character. And I, uh, you know, the idea of a of, of a woman who's trying to find her identity, and she lets somebody else kind of force one on her. I yeah. uh, and and doing that with a psychiatrist is really interesting. But like. Uh, I, I've talked about this a lot with Ninja Turtles, where um, I've always said that one of the big differences between Batman and Superman is, even though there are lots of iterations of Superman, uh, he's not he's not like Batman, where you can do him like a million different ways, and he is he's Superman more than some other things. But like Spider Man's not like this, I don't think. Where uh, I you, you can do him like like super serious, super wacky, anything in between, and they're all valid. They all yeah. count. Somehow Ninja Turtles has that. Yeah. And I've never understood that, but there's like a million iterations of Ninja Turtles that all kind of, kind of work and count. You can go this barometer of really to, to really serious to really goofy and everything in between. Yeah. I don't think Quinn has that. No, yeah, she's pretty much slapstick. Um, but yeah, I'm not totally sure how to answer the question as worded. I don't know. They're talking like different actors playing different roles in different ways of you know, like yeah, because like again to bring up the Joker, you have like Joaquin Phoenix's version, and you have like. Suicide Squad version, you have, you know, all kinds of different versions of different ways to take it. Yeah, well, um, it's... Uh, we're in the era of reboots, of course, and uh, if one thing isn't really working uh, for a studio, but the overall genre is still insanely popular, of course they're gonna just roll a d20 and try it again. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so that's just, that's, that's just kind of where we're at these days. Um, and... I don't mind it when uh, everything is decent. It's yeah. just with certain characters, you wish that you had a, a more definitive version and that it's not some kind of uh, bizarre reimagining that you're stuck with for a while, yeah, right? Like, uh, how long do I got to wait for another reimagining? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, like like Ninja Turtles in 2014 yeah. or even Cavill Superman where I like the casting, but he is, but but uh, that that character wasn't really Superman. Uh, we're all still sort of waiting for the definitive Superman on screen past Reeves and, yeah. uh, or Reeve, pardon me, and it's going to be a while, I think. Yeah. Uh, although Superman and Lois is getting a lot closer, so we at least have Decent Superman on TV now, which is wonderful. But anyway. Um, Busted Sim wants to know if you've yes. seen the most recent episode of The Orville. He says best one yet, in his opinion. If a and third one has come out, I haven't seen it yet, and I need to finish the last 10 or 15 minutes of the episode before that. So I'm not caught up on Orville, but I have loved what I've seen so far. I'm very happy with it. Uh, we got a super chat from Dylan yeah. the Villain. Thanks, Dylan. What's you up, man? Are you going to do a Strange New World spoiler cast at the end of season one? I have every intention. Absolutely. Because they finally made a show that I don't hate. And that feels like it's actually Star Trek. And uh, I've been having a lot, a lot of fun talking about it. So, yeah, uh, I, I definitely will. And I know there's folks that will be annoyed with me about all the other new shows that I'm not doing spoiler cast for. Because I haven't been doing that as much lately. But uh, I've been really invested in that. And I have things to say. So I definitely will, will, uh, will come back and... And talk about that. Um, I don't know if I'll do it on my own or if I'll bring a co-host in for that. Because uh, Adam's been watching that too, and he might want to talk with me about that. Uh, if I can get Sarah on camera for that, I will, because it would be. It, it might be fun. I don't. I don't know if she'll want to, but it might be fun uh, to have the juxtaposition of the Picard season one spoiler cast, where both of us were just stone faced and like we don't even want to be here, and uh, Strange New Worlds, where we'll we'll look like we're real high on adequacy. 
<laughs> the best, the best high. It's, it, it is the best high, absolutely. Um, Robert Wild. High. Exactly. Sorry, what? Robert Wild wants to know what is the maximum flight speed of a swallow? That's when you know the show's about over. <laughs> And, you know, we all do that, too. Nobody ever remembers the actual quote because that swallow wasn't just a swallow. It was a particular kind of swallow. I don't remember <laughs> what it was. I don't know why we always go to that and we don't just say, like, like what, what is your favorite color? Because yeah. I, that's not hard to remember. <laughs> it's not the average of a um, swallow. Yeah. I haven't seen that movie in a long time, and it was kind of funny. We're, we're talking about Monty Python. Holy Grail. When I was in high school, uh, people quoted that movie so much I never wanted to see it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just drove me insane. I was like, stop it. Uh, it was a long time ago. I'm sure kids in high school are not talking about that anymore. Well, Jason has asked, what is your favorite color? Like three times in the stream. <laughs> um, all, all you have to do is look at the layout for the show and you'll know my favorite color. What is your favorite color? Uh, You're a color artist. We got to know what your favorite color is. Man, uh, favorite color to wear clothing would be black. Uh, favorite color to tattoo or art is probably like reds or just like any kind of fire color. It's not purple though, right? No, uh, I love purple. Purple's a good color. Okay, but yeah. he got so tired of purple. Oh, dude, yeah, just, just, when we did nights, yeah, he was just like, okay, so yeah. how much how much more purple the whole thing do we just, have to do now? Different tones of purple. Crap. Yeah. And then this took three sessions. I, I guess Ted took before. Yeah, one touch and, session at the end. And I and I came back and I was like, okay, so I don't don't punch me in the face. You know, uh, there's more purple, yeah. right? But there wasn't was, a ton. Yeah, no, but yeah, no, it was definitely not purple. No, I'm joking. <clears throat> Hey, here's a question. Uh, How well do you remember pieces you do? You do so much stuff. Uh, if I see a tattoo, like if it's something I spent multiple hours on like that, if I see it again in person, it, like, you know, out in the wild or whatever, you know, yeah, I'll yeah. instantly recognize that it's my work and remember the tattoo itself. Uh, but if I see the person, like, I won't remember what they have on. No, yeah, I remember the tattoos when I do them. Yeah. I was going to say, like, when, when I see you, I assume that you don't necessarily remember... Oh, you're different. Once I've tattooed on you three or four times, I'll start... You, you know, yes, oh, yeah. yeah. And we start getting cooler tattoos and bigger tattoos, and it's a little bit different, yeah. It's not just, I'm, I saw you three times last year when you got, like, little 30-minute tattoos, yeah. Well, because that's not just a matter of, like, remembering the burrito you served a, exactly, a guy. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's more, well, you and I kind of have a rapport. Yeah, that's the person that has the bubbles, because I got that picture on my, on my uh, uh, Instagram, you know. Yeah. But also, like, we're, we're, we're becoming friends yeah, a little yeah, bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you probably know the tattoos your friends have. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. like, if you and I, you, you and I hanging out a little bit, yeah. but, well, yeah, I remember Cap's got the, you know, yeah. the, the bubbles on it on his leg. Like, I did it, but I also remember it because I know that guy. Exactly, yeah, yeah, sure. I try to make that question sound as dumb as humanly possible. I'm sorry. You'd be surprised the amount of people like I'll run into out public at a concert. And they'll come up, I tattooed them a five minute tattoo and a year ago. They're like, oh, you don't remember me? No, no, I don't. Not at all. No. So, yeah. Like, why would I? Yeah. You can't. You can't expect them to yeah. either. Oh, um, people do. People. Yeah. You don't remember me? I was just in Branson, and there's a couple places that I frequent. That frequent, you know, every time I go there, I yeah. go there once a year. So like, I remember the people that work there. Yeah, but they don't remember me. Ever, yeah. But that's always kind of weird, like for like from the other side of it. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I get it, I, like you know, tattooing them, like you know, if even it's a small tattoo, it changed your life to some degree. Yeah. So they they have that strong memory ironed in there, but they don't realize like I tattooed five other people right after them, you know, that day. So. Is that a thing that you that you feel like you kind of have to work to continue to appreciate because it's your job it's like the regular thing you do of like this is permanent and it's oh, special oh for yes like i always gotta yeah, you like, gotta kind of remind yourself sometimes yeah don't take it for granted yeah and like don't take it for granted for someone's story you know what i'm saying like this even doing a small tattoo might not mean nothing to me but it might mean everything to that person so yeah yeah like, i put on the not fake smile but you know hey, you know like in the fake it you make it customer service thing yeah well that was also a thing that uh not not to toot your own horn yeah. too much but but th that that's a thing that i really appreciated about you uh both coming in myself but also bringing in my mom yeah. where like i get the sense that you know that it's not just about the finished product but the the experience, experience yeah yeah the whole the whole yeah the whole from beginning till they walk out yeah the whole experience is something big yeah and the people is expecting one thing if you're yeah, if you're an ass, well, I mean, really rude to someone. Yeah. You know, they're going to remember that, and it's going to kind of put a damper on that, that, that what could have been a positive moment for them. That's part of why uh, I've continued doing it, 
and and that was one of the big things I was kind of shocked by is that I like the process of it. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's not. Good. It's not just having it. Like I actually enjoy getting it done. Oh yeah, the whole yeah the process. Behind I wouldn't it. if I didn't like you. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, what's funny is that there's a guy when I first started getting tattooed, I really wanted to get a big tattoo from him. Met him in person. He was super rude. I was like, yep, nope, I'm not going to spend a dollar with you. And yeah. That struck me ever since then. Ever since then, I'm like I'm not going to be that guy. Well, and let's be fair, it ain't cheap. Yeah, no, no, yeah. yeah. There's thousands of dollars invested in them. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, I think it's worth it. And uh, I, I, I've i read some uh, occasional complaints about you guys that uh, you're, you're higher than some other shops. I'm like, have you seen the work? Yeah, and have you seen yeah. how fast they are? Like, yeah. it's it's totally, uh, you, you know, you get what well, you people, yeah, for. Like, so the people that complain about that are always the people that are trying to get the $20 tattoos. And that's that's cool. That's, that's their thing, you know. But yeah, if you're wanting something big and big and cool, then yeah, you're gonna pay for it. And those people understand that. Yeah, there seems see. to be a consistency where the shops. And tell me if I'm wrong, because I'm not like an expert. But th- there seems to be a consistency that most of the shops that really know what they're doing and have talented artists uh-huh. have uh, somewhere around like a fifty or sixty dollar cap. Oh, easy. Where they minimum? Oh, easy. Minimum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like by the hour, like I'm hundred fifty dollars an hour. Like so, pretty much like I'll do a shop minimal on small stuff, and then after that, it's hundred fifty bucks an hour. Like we're gonna do it hourly. Yeah. Well, and. I don't know how you'd eat if you weren't. Oh yeah, if you weren't that because you're gonna have days where you're not gonna do more than a. Oh than yeah, and two, like right? the, the the cost of living going up right now, like it, there's been no like market increase in tattoos, like it's still the same price. So I think sooner or later you're not gonna suddenly get paid more. Exactly. Yeah, here pretty soon there's gonna be some kind of like somewhere's gotta give. Yeah. No, that's a really good call, DJ. I saw a super chat, sir. Yes, sir. Roger Lee, Cap. Not sure if you're keeping track of our bo- of box office numbers. But what are your thoughts on the Top Gun Maverick phenomenon? For me, it was the ultimate movie-watching experience all three times. So I have not had a chance to see it yet. I say not not a chance. <clears throat> I want to go, and I and I've and I've mentioned this before, but uh, I chose not to because Top Gun is one of my wife's favorite movies, <laughs> and she and and she doesn't actually really care. I uh, she. She couldn't get excited about seeing that movie initially, and I think a lot of us had that, where it was like another decades later sequel, doesn't seem like a thing any anybody really needs. When was the last time the Air Force actually like put planes in the air and had to fire at anything? It just seems like a weird time to have an Air Force movie. And um and, and a lot of decades later sequels, of course, are, are not good and just kind of cash ins, and I think everybody sort of assumed that's what it would be. Um, even hearing that it's like unanimously, universally <laughs> praised and loved, like it's you know, the second coming of Christ or something. Um, my wife, I don't think, would mind if I went to the theater, but I don't feel right going without her to a sequel that's apparently brilliant to one of her favorite movies. So I, and with the the twins at home, we just can't both go to the theater at the same time. And also, there's such a quick turnaround right now with movies coming uh, to video that... <laughs> in six to eight weeks after that finally leaves the theater, I'm probably going to get to see it. And people are saying that's a really great like IMAX experience and you need to go to the theater to see it. I'm probably just not going to get to. Um, so I, I I say all that to say I can't really talk too much about the phenomenon and why it's happening until I've seen the film. But I'm, I'm shocked by it, partly just because it sounds like it's going to be, and, and we talk about this a lot on the channel, where this is a phrase that doesn't mean anything, and uh, and I don't know why we still use it, but it sounds like the exception that proves the rule. Um, there are so many of these things that just uh, are cash grabs and no good at all, and uh, it's really surprising to me that, of all things, the Top Gun sequel <laughs> would be this, this brilliant cultural phenomenon that may have a shot at Oscars or something. I don't know. Um... Yeah, it's on its way to a billion. Is it really? <laughs> it passed. It passed nine hundred million all the way back on Monday. Good Lord. This this was an eat my hat moment. For it, me it was going to be one. It's going to be one thing or the other. It's going to be really horrible and cheesy, or it's gonna it wasn't going to be anything in the middle. It wasn't going to be mediocre. No, 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 no. no. It's it was going to be the worst thing you ever saw. Or it was going to be amazing. Or we were we were all going to be kissing the ring. Yeah. yeah. So, I I had an eat my hat moment <laughs> with 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 uh, with Top Gun Maverick because uh, before that movie came out, Tom Cruise insisted that it go to the theater. Yeah. The studio wanted to release, if, if, if memory serves, the studio wanted to release it streaming, like yeah. so many things did during COVID. Yeah, and, it was yeah. ready to be released before COVID, because I've never seen a teaser trailer yes. before. Yeah. It's a full year yeah. after it was supposed to come out, maybe a year and a half. And Cruz was like, no, it has to go to the theater. And I was like, he's so full of himself. Yeah. He's so he's so up, it, right? And yeah. then and then it came out and it's about to do a billion dollars and I'm like well he knew, he knew what he made yeah. it's the thing like I so so anyway I was really I, 
I'm kind of impressed with him now, you know, for insisting that he was right. His instincts were there. Yeah. So anyway, um, I'm excited to see it. And uh, this has been a spectacular year for movies. I have had people say, not that everything I've seen is great, somebody needs to explain to me what's going on with the home releases from Morbius. <laughs> because, sorry, I gotta say this real quick. Morbius got a steel book. <laughs> I don't understand that. Morbius is getting like, I, uh, I uh, like like cool look. You're not cool because I don't like the art with that movie. But um, but but it's it's getting the like collector's treatment. DJ Targets got one. Have you seen Targets? Yeah, yeah, I saw it. They look way better than the crappy No Way Home releases that we got. Yeah, but but did you see what Target did with it? It's the yeah, it's cool. fan art edition. That's what Target's been doing for like six months now. That's what the Spider-Man. What was is on. that? They all. I don't know. They all have um, custom fan artwork that I guess was art. assumed uh, sent in by a fan. I don't know. The Spider-Man one was terrible. It looked like how it should have ended. We have fans that like it enough <laughs> to make art. Anyway, no, it's crazy. Um, I don't. I don't want to buy one because that it's it's not a good movie. I can't. I can't imagine spending thirty-five dollars on a collector's edition of Morbius, <laughs> and yet. I'm a big superhero movie collector, and I almost want it just because they were crazy enough to do it. <laughs> like, it's just so weird that it's there. But anyway, um, I digress. Somebody, uh, after Top Gun Maverick came out, uh, sent me a message and said, Cap, you're not going to believe me, but uh, it, it is better than everything everywhere all at once, and you will agree with me when you see it. And I'm like, BS! There's no <laughs> way! It's not possible. That's one of the best films I've seen in ten years. Like, there's... Uh, that that uh, that multiverse movie, it's brilliant. And uh, if that actually happens, I will find a hat and eat it. But anyway, <laughs> go, go ahead, DJ. Uh, before I move on, I'm going to uh, echo everyone yelling at you that it's about the Navy cap, not the Air Force. Oh, did I say, oh, well. <laughs> it's, it's, it's planes. <laughs> when was the last time the Navy sent up airplanes and had to fire on anyone? My point stands, yes? <laughs> no? Um, we talk primarily about superhero movies on this channel. I don't, <laughs> I don't have to know anything about. <laughs> Me and Emma are not speaking at all. We're yeah. just letting you dig your own hole. <laughs> <laughs> um, from a super chat from Mercer Create, Mercer Create. I Orville... really appreciate the support from you guys, by the way. <laughs> oh, anytime. Mercer uh, or... Create. Orville NH episode four was amazing. Are we four in already? Am I, two, am I two and 15 minutes behind? He says Krill story. Oh, good. I, I I figured we would get a Krill episode pretty soon. But uh, yeah, that's that's exciting. Um, ooh, that, actually, I say pretty soon. I thought it'd be later than that. That's that's really exciting. Um, I, I'm not going to say anything for folks that have not watched that show, but might at some point. But uh, the Krill are really interesting. Anyway. Um, AMC Comics, did you guys talk about the extended cut of No Way Home that's coming back to theaters yet? No, actually, that's not come up yet. Uh, no, we didn't talk about that. The name of it is really dumb. Did oh, no. Did you see that? I can't remember. Is it, they... is it Spider-Man Justice is Gray? Oh, no, it's worse than that. <laughs> oh, and, no. and, and that shouldn't be possible, but uh, what, what do they call it? The More Fun Stuff Edition? What? I think is what they called it. They should have called it, yeah, we know this isn't a movie. And that's why we can get away with releasing this. But at the same time, I mean, you know that'll do fine. Any, anytime a movie does even a billion dollars, you can probably get away with re-releasing it for a little bit. But oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that was, you know, insanely record. Look, you and I don't have to appreciate it. Like like other people do for Marvel to put it out and make money. Um, I, putting director's cuts in theaters is just weird. I guess I'm kind of of two minds about it. I okay, I say that I'm not of two minds about it. If you're gonna put a director's cut in the th in in the theater just because the initial cut made money, what you're really saying is we didn't trust this enough to put out the right version of it. <laughs> But now that we know you like it, we'll put out what we should have put out in the first place. Or it's just a, like, double-dipping money-milking thing. Where you're like, well, I mean, we have one more footage. <laughs> we have on floor. Yeah. 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 We only made a billion dollars last time when we can make a little more. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with it if it's, like, years later, like, when you put when they whenever they show the extended Lord of the Rings, like, that makes sense. Because that's the, the real movie. 
and it's like a decade later or whatever. Yeah, it's it's called the more fun stuff version. <laughs> the more fun stuff. Yeah, am I right? That is dumber than Justice is Grey. Oh yeah, they're that's... dumb in different ways, but I'm yeah. I'm surprised they didn't try to make a Morbius pun in there somehow. <laughs> I'm surprised the re-release for that wasn't called the Morbid Time. The Morbid Time. The Morbid Time. Oh, it's cut Morbid Time or release or whatever. Can you believe they re-released that over memes? To, Have you heard memes? about this? Uh uh-uh. uh uh, Sony doesn't understand the difference between <laughs> a movie being liked and popular and people on the internet making fun of you. <laughs> so they think something's popular? Yeah. So that got a bunch of memes and it was trending real hard on Twitter. So some executive at Sony went, oh my god, people love this movie that had like an 80% drop off in the second week. <laughs> and they're like, uh, I guess we better put it back in the theater. And shocker. Really nobody did. saw it because nobody was seeing it in the first place after that first week anyway uh hey dj let's go ahead and do maybe one more we, we actually uh, have somehow stretched this to almost two hours it's amazing. yeah i'll <laughs> ask this one because cinemagraphic keeps uh bringing it up a lot he really wants to know, Cap and DJ, what do you think would okay, happen? Okay, well, let's not set a precedent, okay? You're not going to necessarily get a question read just because you spammed the, the chat, okay? Yeah, well, it's the only one please, I have left. Please don't do that. Oh, okay, so now it's desperation. I'm sure your question is great. <laughs> well, he hasn't, he hasn't spammed, but he brought up at the very beginning, and then he asked me a couple times. Oh, fair I, enough. He, okay, he wrote cool. it again. But uh, Cinemagraphic... I'm just, I'm just kidding. Thanks, Cinemagraphic. Go ahead. What do you think would happen if a speedster tried to use their speed... In Clockstopper's Hyper Time. Oh, he's he asked that in a couple other shows. Um, I'm sorry if you've if if you've been like, for some reason dreaming about this question being talked about on the show. But I saw that movie one time and we talked over it. I don't remember how the time travel works in that really. Yeah, DJ, you're even... gonna have to answer this because you know Clockstopper's way better than well, I do. Well, I, I don't know. It's, I don't know anything about speedsters. It's not even time travel. It's like it's, it's just like slowing everybody down, stops. Right? Yeah, everyone like your molecules move so quickly that it looks like everyone else is standing still. Okay. Um, so does he mean, like, if a speedster is going at top speed when that's happening? Like, I, I don't know. Just go really, really fast. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, su- I suppose so. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure how to be insightful with, uh, with that question. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Um... Um, we got another super chat from Mercer Create. Maybe you uh, wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Like if if you're if you're using Speed Force and you're going fast enough that it already feels like everything has stopped and everything really was stopped, maybe you wouldn't even know. Yeah. In fact, what I think would happen is you would. Um, well, I, w- I want to actually try to answer the question. I, so, what, what I think would happen, Elmo, is you would you you'd be running real fast, right? And everything is stopped around you, and you think it's because you're going fast. Yeah. And then you'd stop, and then when um, then everybody stop, yeah. is is still frozen, you'd think it was your fault, and you did something wrong, yeah. and you'd try to fix the universe, but it actually had nothing to do with your speeding. Yeah. It was some other superpower thing. Um, or the clock stoppers like time stopping watch thing. Uh, that would be really funny. That sounds like a five minute short film. Anyway, <laughs> go ahead. Um, Mercer Create also says in a two dollars super chat, we see Krill Planet, huge scope. It floored me. That's exciting. Um, I was gonna say that sounds like a thing they would need another two parter for, but being on Hulu now, they're not limited and they can put out uh, episodes of any link they want to. So, like, the first episode of that season is an hour and ten minutes. It's, like, somewhere in between your standard TV episode and a two-parter. Uh, we've got another super chat. Let's answer that and call it a day, I think. Yeah, Roger Lee, $10 super chat. Think about this. 40 years ago this month... I shall. Thank you for the super e- chat. E.T., yeah. Star Trek Two, Poltergeist, Blade Runner, The Thing, were all in the theater at the same time the summer eight of 82 was stacked. I know. We always uh, talk about how huge 84 was. And, uh, yeah, 82 was insane. And and then it and then it crashed the video game industry. <laughs> that's funny. But, yeah, that's a really good point. Um, there's a couple of those that I always forget are specifically that year. Uh, oh, I should show you guys something really quick. And I'm partly doing this so that I won't forget about it. But I got something in the mail. So uh, we had a sponsorship earlier in the year. Was it last year? Was it earlier in the year? 
uh, for this documentary, and uh, I, I have the physical copy of it now. And I actually could have watched this on digital for the last couple of months, but I just haven't had time, and it's a three-hour documentary. But anyway, um, this is In Search of Tomorrow, and uh, these guys were super cool and did a sponsorship thing, and I was... Uh, uh, promoting this for a few weeks on the channel and showing interviews from it and stuff. Uh, this is a documentary about uh, science fiction movies in the 80s, so precisely what you're bringing up right now, and all of those movies, I'm sure, are talked about here. Um, maybe not Poltergeist, but uh, all, all the actual science fiction movies yeah. are talked about here, and uh, this came with some cool perks. Um, I, what's really funny is I went ahead and uh, donated to their Kickstarter, just because they were uh, really cool to do the sponsorship thing, and I was like, I have 60 bucks, I'll go ahead and do that. And then I found out that they were going to send me a review copy. Uh, but, anyway. <laughs> but I got all the cool perks for it, so yeah. I'm glad I did it anyway. Uh, it has really neat... I'm not going to show all of this, but it has really neat posters, and I want to find a place to put these. But these are just super cool. This is just the, uh, the cover for that movie, but there's some other ones... Hold nope. that or put that somewhere. I appreciate it. Um, because some of these go landscape, DJ. Hello. Oh, Window posters. Look at that. That's rad. These are cool. <laughs> There's a couple of other ones. But anyway, I, I will try to watch this soon and do a... If not a full-on review, I'll mention it here uh, on the Captain Logan Show, but uh, I might do a whole stream for it. I don't know. Brandon will probably want to watch it with me. Maybe, maybe I'll do it with him. But anyways, um, okay. That looks like about it, DJ. Yes, sir. Folks, thanks a lot for watching the Captain Logan Show. Sure appreciate it. And Elmo, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, no you problem. coming Thank over. You. I hope you had a good time, oh, yeah. man. I had a blast. Thank you. Almost Ooh. done. He's already left. He got up. He's, he, he's, he's leaving. Again, he doesn't have a car. I don't know where he's going, but, but anyway. Uh, thanks again, everybody, for joining us. I, I'm not going to, to have our regular Friday show tomorrow night because it's my wife's birthday, and uh, oh. I, I got her a movie that I never thought would get the kind of release that it got. I've and seen I, it. And I don't think she's going to see the stream, so I think I can get away with mentioning it. But shh, shh, nobody tell her. Uh, but I got her... I could get up and go get it, but I'm not going to. I, I, got, I got her uh, the newer... I'm, I'm, I'm talking really quietly suddenly, like it's going to make a difference. Um, but, I, but I got her the, the new version of uh, The Return of Captain Invincible, which is mm -hmm. her uh, absolute favorite movie of all time. It's this really obscure uh, B superhero movie that we both love. And DJ, it's... It, there's a director's cut. It's 11 minutes longer. We're going to get to see new footage from that thing. And I'm so excited about it. About it. And they remastered it. Uh, the stills I've seen of it look gorgeous. And there is a music CD. And there's a bunch of special features. Just stuff I never thought we'd see. So uh, tomorrow night, Sarah and I, she doesn't know it yet. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to watch the director's cut for her birthday. And um, she's going to lose it when she sees that. So yeah, I'm super excited about it. Uh, but anyway, so I'll be back on Sunday if uh, everything goes according to plan with a new episode of Superhero Rewind Unscripted. And like I said earlier, I'm going to be talking about Suicide Squad. And unfortunately, I have to watch it. I have to watch that movie twice in the same week. Hey, I still never <laughs> see it. I didn't know your wife's birthday was only three days after my wife's birthday. I guess I never put that together either. It's pretty crazy. But June 20th. Cool. Roger Lee, I would love to take my wife to see Top Gun, but we don't have a babysitter, so I can't do that. Connor's well, supposed to be there soon. The sound of bags rustling means the show must be over. So, no, you're fine. I'm oh, just kidding. Okay. So, uh, we'll see you again next time, folks. And uh, join us again next Thursday night for another one. I am Captain Logan. This was DJ Martinez. And see thanks again, once again, to our remote special guest who had to leave on Skype early. Uh, we'll see you again next time, everybody. Bye, folks.